Hey, hey, folks, here we are. We might be drunk. We're here. We're queer. We've got a fun guest today. I, Jim Norton. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the weather is crazy out today, right? I mean, yeah. I, I want to come in and just do bits. Yeah, right. <laughs> How about that trans shooter? <laughs> oh, the guy I, the guy in the elevator the other day, I was, I was with someone, and she goes, so I'm going to California. And he goes, you're going now, just so the weather's going nice. And we'd be like, uh, <laughs> ah, good. How about That's the, a good, uh, good one. Stuff. You know, when it rains, like, oh, you brought it with you. I guess you brought it with you. I'm like, no, I didn't yeah. bring anything. I'll actually agree with them, though, and go with the bit and go, yeah, more. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming. That's a, that's a lot of peeves this week. I have a lot of peeves. Oh, yeah. A lot of uh, annoying. You know what annoyed me recently is uh, pers- people that don't put their dogs on leashes really annoy me. Oh. There's a, there's a hallway, and they're just running through the hallway. What? And, yeah, and then they're just like, come here, come here, and the dog doesn't come and you're like it's a, a get a leash yeah yeah but then there's a problem with the leash guy who stretched out the leash all I over the, the, the sidewalk leash, yeah. so. it's a domination thing it's one of those things where they want to show you the control they have over their animal right. so what happens i hate when the elevator opens and then they take the leash off and they let it run down yes, the hall yes and it's like wow this fucking beast master yeah <laughs> it's, it is kind of annoying i understand <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah it sucks now they're having a big problem with dogs are shitting on planes because they'll have like multiple service dogs now. Oh, wow. So there's all these videos online like TikTok. There's just dogs, people stepping dog shit in the aisle of a Southwest flight. Damn. It's out of control. Didn't they stop allowing all those like, animals on? Didn't they say like, no, no more, or we're only going to allow certain service animals well, and no more comfort dogs? I think you get the paperwork, you're good to go. Oh, okay. I think anyone can bring a dog on. I remember the whole United thing. Remember, they were having a bad week. They dragged the person off the plane, oh, and Asian they guy. they killed a dog. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, in the overhead. overhead. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Imagine being the guy who's waiting to get off of your connecting flight, and there's a 13-year-old holding a <laughs> fucking dead puppy. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to be a dick head here but i got a fucking <laughs> flight in 15 minutes <laughs> oh you i guess, can't put I guess they only have bag. one uh check bag now <laughs> right. i do kind of like that guy though because he's like i feel bad about the dog so i'll put it up here that's pretty yeah. considerate i mean it's not for the dog no it wasn't he didn't do it, it oh he the, didn't do no it. they made him do it uh, no one no one <laughs> wants to voluntarily put their dog in the overhead. oh i thought he was a nice guy no yeah. it was the flight attendant i guess the dog was too big for under yeah. and th- this is what like great owners they were they did it was like a two and a half hour flight and they didn't notice that the the dog wasn't making any noise. Oh boy! Like for two hours, they didn't check on the fucking dog for over two hours. <laughs> yeah, and they got a, like a, a, a sad slash hilarious surprise. <laughs> It'd be great if the dog was screaming. They just had noise canceling yeah. the whole time on their computer. Yeah, that's that whimper. I hate a dog whimper. Oof. You wouldn't think those are airtight though, would you? Like I would no. think that you could get air in there. Totally, but maybe a bump. Jerked him right. around or something. Maybe or, the poor little guy was just so frightened his heart quit. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've lost every dog lover in the first three minutes. Yeah, of yeah. Podcast. Well, keep off the flights, goddammit. Yeah. But off my ex had a chihuahua, and she was a great gal, yeah. and she was a uh, fun lady, but that dog was a nightmare. It was hell. Everybody hated the dog. We didn't have the heart to tell her. It got brain cancer eventually. We all had a party. Sure. I thought, I thought you were going to go the other way with that, where you are like, oh, the, but the, the dog was all right. Wasn't oh, that like the Jeselnik yeah, yeah. joke? <laughs> great gal. Yeah. The dog was fun, but uh, <laughs> she uh, she would drug it with Benadryl to yeah. get it on a flight because it was just so yappy, and it was the best it was the best dog when it was on Benadryl. Sure, but yeah. otherwise it was hell. I imagine the brain cancer mellowed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah a, lot. a lot. You don't typically see more hyperactivity with a fucking lump in the head. <laughs> Poor little guy. How long did he last after they got the terrible prognosis? Very a couple months, but oh. he would do a thing where he was shitting diarrhea. His whole body was Ugh. all fucked up, but he was shit next to the pee pad. Like he used to shit on it, and then he would shit next to it because of the brain cancer, and it just made you wanted to go. Come on, die already. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's almost like an angry thing by the dog. Like he knows the pee, pee yeah. pad is there, and he's like, "I'm gonna shit on the rug anyway to tell you something's wrong." Exactly, exactly. Uh, cat, was... Cats would do that too. I had a cat years ago. I had three roommates in Brooklyn, <laughs> and uh, I I was on the road every weekend, so I couldn't. I could every time I would leave, the cat would just be like, I'm "Like meow, meow," and I'd be like, well, "I gotta work." <laughs> right. And then at a certain point, you're just like, "All right, well, I gotta get rid of it." Every time I leave, the cat would just piss on someone else's shit. Yeah. So now I'm getting home, and they're like, "Your cat peed on my bag," and I have to be like, "All right, how much was the bag?" Oh. And at a certain point, I was like, "I gotta get rid of the cat." Oh, it was your cat? Yeah. Oh. It was damn. my friend's sister. It's Dan Hall who bartends yeah. at the cellar. It was his sister's cat. 
And she asked me to watch the cat for a week. And uh-huh. I was like, all right, yeah, I could watch a cat for a week. And then she just moved. So oh, I'm just stuck with a cat. Oh, damn. Yeah. But then the cat was pretty cool okay. until this shit happened. Right. I had two cats. I never had pets. I had cats growing up. And I- I'm so stupid. I was five when I got a Manx cat with the tail. Oh, yeah. And I named him Susan. Mm. Uh, because I-, I didn't know it was a, g- a guy. So I, I named him. <laughs> you always were trained. I know. <laughs> You're always into it. Yeah, believe me. I've made these mistakes many times. <laughs> I named him Su- uh, Susan. And like, oh, it's a boy, so I called him John. Uh, and then the other cat was, uh, I named William. We found her outside, but it was a, a female. Twice I made the mistake of naming them opposite wow. gender names. They're both dead now. Um, sure. It's the only, the only animals I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. But you, I, I have a cat now named Greg, so I'm continuing the, the human name. Isn't it weird? Like yeah. a weird, I don't know why. I was a kid, though. When you're a kid, you don't know how to fucking name no, things. No, of course not. So that makes sense. But I'll tell you this. I have a cat, and people come over, and they go, I don't know how you do it. The litter box, the scratching. But they have kids. And I'm like, you have fucked up kids that, yeah. you know, fall off the stairs or cry or shit themselves. Like, you're going to give me shit when you got a kid? Yeah, at least I can back over this thing in the driveway <laughs> when it annoys me. <laughs> yeah, you have to exactly. tolerate it until it goes to college. It's also, yeah. it's also weird to say, you know, like, Susan has cancer. And you're like, oh, my God. And you're like, it's, it's my cat. It's the cat. Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. Right. Yeah. And when yeah. you say Cookie has cancer, you're like, yeah. like cookies. Yeah, right. and Magic Johnson's upset. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're like, ah, Susan shit on my bed. You're like, oh, what's up with this girlfriend of yours? <laughs> <laughs> Susan's an amazing name for a cat. Isn't it it's an awful? So adult. Yeah, yeah, it is an adult, but it's such a plain shit name mm-hmm. that a boy would want to call his cat Susan. I don't know why. <laughs> I was a little fucking fruit. <laughs> well, you grew up in New Jersey, huh? The suburbs. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, it was all teenage angst. You know that sure. fucking melodrama of the you know fucking you're cutting yourself. Like, yeah. Fuck, I like the devil. You know, I was like an emo <laughs> douche before it was popular. I remember right. I was on the uh, the road once and. Uh, no, actually, I wasn't, this wasn't even the right. I was like, it must have been like a family thing. I was in a hotel room with my brother. Mm. I was very young. I remember watching, I think it was Monster Rain, your special. Oh. It was just on TV. And my brother didn't know who you were. So his intro to you was the fucking Monster Rain bit. And I hope you and your oh. brother made eye contact alone in the bedroom. <laughs> and realized things should happen. But it's like when you like don't know what to expect. And he turned to me and was like, this guy's really funny. Hey, Thank you. all right. Monster Rain. Yeah, I still I saw that porch. Whenever I'm in do the stress factory, I go back to that apartment complex because I always think something else happened there. Because I'm so fucked up, I'm like something else happened. But I still look at that porch that we used to crawl under. It's now made of wood. I think it used to be metal. Mm. And then there's a basement window under it, oh, and yeah. I kind of vaguely remember being in that basement. And I'm like, eh, it's probably yeah. not good. Whatever it was. Right. Right. Wow. Was it? Was it? Uh, did you? You were probably dying to get out, dying to get to the city. Um. You know how it is, man. I, I lived at my parents till I was 30. Whoa. I used to get, I used to get, I used to get hookers, and I would park in my parents' driveway and put up the sun thing that blocks the sun. Oh, yeah. And I would get blown in the driveway. Wow. Uh, I would back into the uh, <laughs> the thing, so I, I couldn't take them in the house. Yeah, but, of course. So, yeah, I liked living at home, but it was time to move out. I moved in with Florentine in, uh, wow. in, I think it was 90. Is this when he had long hair? I, I don't know if he was still jamming Jim. He used to be jamming Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Howard Stern named him Jamming Jim, the rock and roll comedian. Oh, fuck. So when I met him, he was jamming Jim, and I fucking hated him. I was like, who is this ass? He had on, like, snakeskin boots. And I was like, oh. <laughs> But he wound up getting me my first paid gig in, in 1991. So Jim has been there since, like, day one wow. for me. I love wow. that. He's the first comic I ever did a weekend with, and he was fucking awesome. Isn't he great? He's, He's such a great guy. guy. Yeah, I love yeah. him. Good no ass. one's ever badmouthed Florentine. Like, no one thinks Florentine's a dick. No, no, no. no. And he gets Laid. Quite. Apparently, women find him attractive, which I find surprising. Yeah, I know. I knew him in his heyday. He used to make us like he would walk by a woman and he would go, "Tell me if she gives me a cheek peek." And he wasn't being ironic. He wanted to see if the girl looked at his ass. Yeah. And if she looked at his ass, he knew she was interested. And I watched it many times. Wow. And it, it would work. I mean, Florentine wow. had great numbers. Oh Hall yeah. Famer. He was banging Robin Quivers for a while. Uh, yes, he did date her. I don't know how long. <laughs> that's insane. I mean, that's like a high-profile black lady. Yes. Well done. Yeah. I don't know how long it lasted or, or exactly what broke it up. I don't think I ever asked Jim about Robin. I probably should have. Yeah. And I know she's a size queen. So really? that must mean he's doing all right. He's big balls. Oh, okay. Florence has big balls. Like, like mm. he's he's all ball. He used to like showing his scrotum off to oh, people. Yeah. His dick, he called it a baby hippity hop because <laughs> the fucking, the balls were big and the dick was like fine. But okay. It was all ball. Ari's like that too. He's all ball. Is having he? huge balls is not doing your dick any favors. It's like having huge quads. Yeah. You know? But yeah. you get the package in the pants because the balls help right. the bulge. So that's a decent, at least you get them in the door. So if it's like an Anthony Weiner underwear pick, it's. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring your own right. infant, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, he didn't even have a great bulge. I, Wiener's, uh, I've seen his dick. Yeah. Uh, that, that actually got le- decent dick. It was fine. I mean, oh, it was like no. dumb Brett Favre's dick. Oh, when he fucking, yeah. he aims, it was the worst dick picture ever. Brett Favre aimed his dick down pull towards his fucking shoes. Yeah. Uh, he was wearing like those sh- those beach shoes. Yeah. <laughs> that was like was such that, a bad dick. Was that when he sent to Jen Sturger? Was that I who it was? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And he isn't. Pretty thick. I thought it was wide. I found it to be remarkably unimpressive this. for oh, a, right, a future right. Hall of Famer. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's out there, but I've seen the dick pic, and it was just, he was like holding it to make it, like tilting it at a weird angle, and oh. I was like, that's a bad pic, man. Oh, no. Well, he's older, so he's not hes not hip to the dick pic world. Yeah. He's in a lot of trouble, isn't he? Didn't he do some shit in Well, he's suing Pat McAfee. There, there's this what? weird back and forth. Where he was involved with some type of a, it had something to do with his kids, a, a tennis court a or a volleyball, volleyball thing yeah. for mm. their school, and then there was allegations that the fucking funds got diverted from was it like welfare or some social oh, services? Interesting. And they said that Brett knew about it. I don't know the details, uh, obviously, by the way I'm talking about it. But then McAfee said something that I guess he thought was actionable, and he's suing Pat McAfee wow. and somebody else. Uh, but I don't know any more details about that uh, than that. It's a tough time. Colin Quinn said it best. You can get in a lot of trouble for what you say, and all we do is talk now into microphones. Yeah. Where we used to not do this, we do it all day, every day, and now you can get in more trouble for just saying crazy shit, and we're just giving it out there. And the more we talk, the less we're actually informed. We're just yeah. talking yes. all the time. True. It's not great. Well, no one, li- nobody wants to listen to anybody. It really is just like when you're just waiting, all right, here's my chance to make a point. That's why yeah. I don't listen to any of it. I, I, I listen to none of it. I can't. You don't like, listen to the backlash, or you don't listen to anything people. I don't are check at mentions because I'm, I'm I just don't I don't give a fuck. And I'm yeah. in the comments, you know, I hate when people go read your comments. Fuck you. Like create because you want to create something, yes. not because commenters are. You know, we have enough feedback from live audiences. Completely agree. Like it's like I get enough attention. Like it, it was bothering me that like how much, uh, how much complete validation do you need? You asshole. Right. Like, I was just made me sick the way I was. So I just stopped. Um, and, and you dwell on it. Somebody's like, hey, your earlobes aren't connected. I'm like, I know, but now I'm in the shower going, ah, the earlobes, you yeah. know? And it does, does, doesn't That's do like anyone any good. the best thing someone could say. That no, who cares yeah. about Take that. the earlobe yeah. thing. Yeah, I, the earlobe thing would be a home run in my attitude. <laughs> 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 fucking, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, I also think about that. I Mark checks every comment. Mark reads a lot of comments. And I think about, like, how many specials you must have put out where there was no comments. Like, HBO... Uh, oh, like, right, all the these, days. you know, Comedy Central, all these specials, and then, uh, and Netflix, and then now, you know, the m- specials that pop for Mark and myself were on YouTube. It's just all comments, right? You know, right. And, and it's okay to let people make them, but I, I find that reading them, like I, I know what I do on stage, so like I can tell if it worked or not by the reaction. True. Right. Like we're not doing things in a vacuum, and I think it's it was just unhealthy for me. Like I just kept obsessing over it and I was like what are you doing like who the fuck cares for you. even if these people like you that was it was like I, I don't like myself eh, eh, it just it, the neediness of it annoyed me yeah and I got out of the habit of doing it and we're dr- driving the ship we got to remember that like we'll have no guest on then we'll have a guest and people are like yeah a guest fuck the guests or oh I like it better with no guest or whatever and you're like oh maybe we should do that but then you go no we're doing our show Stop telling us what to do. Yeah, you have on who you want to have on, and yeah. you know you know what's funny. You know it's not funny. You know, yeah, that's what I try to uh, live by. It's hard though. I mean, it's really hard. People will insult me in my at mentions. Well, the question yeah. is, you've seen both sides of this comedy industry, where it was like all audience, no internet, traveling on the road, doing gigs. You had your radio show, but now it's just all internet. It feels like it is all internet. But I've been getting bashed. I mean, I'm kind of immune to feeling bashed online. I just don't care mm. because it's been happening for over 20 years. Like yeah. first time I read negative shit about myself was right after 9/11. I was I did some joke on the radio and people were like that's fucking too soon. Maybe mm. I remember reading it like one of those message board yeah. things. So you get used to it after a while. You just become numb to the fact that no matter what you do, people are going to be cunts and I guess so. Do you remember the joke or, or no? No, I don't even remember. It was it might have been it was on the air. It was a radio thing. Um, so it was just you know made fun of something. But yeah. I remember so on 9/11 inter- I called. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. I remember I called in Opie and Anthony because we couldn't get into the city. Um, and I remember I calling in as like the naval planes were circling. Oh, wow. And I wanted to do a joke. I remember because I used to always plug at inappropriate times. <laughs> but I was like, I remember almost plugging gigs. But I'm like, ah, don't. I, I, even in that moment, I'm like, ah, this would be a bad. Don't do, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can smell smoke. You should probably not plug. But the question is, have we gotten easily offended or is it just easier to get the offended out there in public? 
You know, because like uh, Seth MacFarlane said when he started Family Guy, he would get bags of hate mail, like garbage bags, and gar- and they would just throw them in the dumpster. But now they get read <laughs> online, and they they put and then they catch, and then somebody be, goes, "Yes, you are homophobic." Be, that or must whatever. be weirdly satisfying. Deleting an email doesn't feel great. No, but taking a bag and yeah. just throwing it in the dumpster, literally, and then light it on fire, you knowing know? they haven't been heard. Yes, <laughs> the best. That's why I don't block. I mute. Keep talking. Yes, you stupid I'm motherfucker. The same way. And somebody had to write down and fold it and lick it and put a stamp on it and send it, and well, we don't even read it. But Mark and I talk about this all the time, like how I don't, I'm not one of those comics who's like people are easily offended now. I don't care. Most yeah. crowds are, are pretty good for the most sure. part still. Sure. But uh, your generation was so much tougher at the table, just hanging out. Like your generation of you, Colin, you know, Bobby, Patrice, Patrice Burr, Nick, Nick yeah. Keith. But you also at that time it was different because we were dealing with political correctness from like 1990. Like you know what I mean? Like so we had it too. It was just a different. Le- it just layers up or levels up every few years. It gets exponentially worse. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like right. that's the beauty of this. Like all these people now, these woke people, they are committing a sin somehow that they're not aware of is a of sin. Of course, of course. But people who are being born now in 15 years will tell them what their sin is. Yeah. So that's the only thing that ho- I hold on to is all these little <laughs> fucking. Uh, is that's a problem. Problem. Yeah. Oh, are you gonna fucking get it in fifteen years? Right. Because you don't know the sin you're committing is a sin right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I actually saw someone I follow on Twitter this uh, this political guy Matt Welch post uh, yesterday. This woman was getting torn apart online. I just saw him quote tweet it, and he wrote. Remember when you called me a transphobe? Oh, like, this isn't fun. Oh, you know? I love that. And he basically was, it wasn't like hateful. It was just kind of like. Matt Welsh or Walsh? Welch. Oh, I don't know Matt he's Welsh. He's like a, he has a podcast. Uh, he's on Bill Maher. Oh, okay. okay. You know? But yeah, welcome to the party. Get yeah. in line. This is, this is what you yeah. guys do. It sucks, right? It's, yeah, it's all endless. So it's I, like, you may as well chill out. Yeah, you may as well ignore it. I got called a transphobe. Like, uh, it was some <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner joke I had done. I don't remember what it was. It was something about, yeah. uh, I was shocked. It was something about in politics and tying in with it being one thing and not the other. Um, and people fucking, they were, few, this yeah. the hill you want to die on. And like, you're transphobic. It's just, Okay, it's, fuck you. Ariel will get called a Nazi, and you're like, look at his face. I know. Come on. <laughs> I know. He's not a nice. He's a propaganda poster. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But the, the, what bugs me the most is I get it. They're stupid people. They're angry. They want clicks. But when you go, hey, I'm Jewish, they go, ah. They don't care. They don't care, yeah. but I, you should go, oh, shit, I didn't know that. My bad. Nazi doesn't make sense. Take it back. Because it's not do. about the point. It's, it's about, about being angry. Point. And it's like, if, it's almost like if somebody tells you and corrects you and then you go, oh, then you can't be angry. Like, the, it's all a lie just to excuse being angry. It feels right. good. Oh, that's a good point. You all know, right. so people don't want to not be angry. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think, is there any party that satisfied these people that come after you and then find out that you were with a trans person or like maybe... Or do you think that makes no difference to that? Um, I mean, if it was if it was a trans person, but I've put quite a few through college. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I I don't ever think of it like that. Like eh, if they don't know, they don't know. Like I I don't care because it's, again, it's never about. I don't even think they're being legitimate when they accuse me of it. So me not being a transphobe, I don't doesn't mean anything because their accusation is a lie. So right. I don't care, and right, I don't care right. even if they mean it. Really, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. I don't. I, you know. Trust me, you know, talk to my fucking, uh, talk to my tonsils. They'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but as comics, I feel like we want to be accurate. We want to be right about everything. So when they're not right, you, you want, you're like, wait, why aren't you ashamed of being incredibly inaccurate? Because we deal with hecklers. Like if a guy heckles you, it's right there. You deal with it. It's addressed. Yes. You, you, he knows, you know what he said. They all know. Yep. It's almost like you have the judge and the jury in the same yes. room. Yes. But you don't have that online. Cause no. You're like, no, but that thing you said, it's too diluted. But in a club, it's you suck. And then you hammer them. Yeah. Oh, it's so satisfying. It's literally a town hall meeting where you get applause after every interruption. Yes. It's fucking great. Yeah. Because you're always going to win. Oh, yeah. If you don't win, you can, yeah, I mean, you have a well, microphone. Yeah, yeah, you should. I've gone, well, sometimes you go too hard, yeah. you yes. lose. You yes. go, hey, you cunt, and they're like, whoa, easy. And yeah, like, oh, it's a shit. kid walking through to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but, then kinda, the but then you can kind of shit on yourself for going too hard. There's still ways to save it. And That's it, true. And uh, you're always going to you're always gonna come off better than them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, early on, I definitely lost. Yes. Oh, Early man. on, I remember some of those where you're like, oof. I, I saw a legendary one. It wasn't me, but I was at a show, and a comic was on stage doing a fat joke, and a guy in the front row was like, 
crazy obese, like huge. And he goes, hey, enough with the fat stuff. And he goes, sir, relax. You're going to die in a year anyway. And he, the whole crowd turned on. The guy stood up. It got ugly. And uh, I was like, all right, noted. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully he was right, though. <laughs> yeah. The guy's long gone. The guy stood up and he was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh fuck. He's reading the obituaries for the next 12 months. I was crying. <laughs> I lost once. I don't remember what the guy said. It was probably 1991. Or it was like my first two years of doing stand-up. And I was getting hammered by this guy in Wildwood, New Jersey. And he was mm. fucking relentless. He was funny. So afterwards, I talked to him. And he was actually a cool guy. He said, yeah, sorry about that. And his job was he was a dunk tank clown oh my so he God. was used to fucking just ripping people as yeah. they you know, blah, 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 and that he he smashed me pretty good uh, I, I lost that one that's that the hilarious. one i can remember losing you think a dunk tank clown that guy has never heard the sentence he won right <laughs> <laughs> he lost in life but see the sad Damn. thing now is i hear that story i'm like that'd be a great clip because we're so fucking obsessed with the clips. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are what you're doing is so good because you're putting out like funny original shit that's like it. It, it gets people to people to come see you. You don't it rely on work. the business. Like it's great. That's true. And you're not burning material or the way you do it, where you do so much topical stuff. I mean, I love following you at the cellar or following Colin at the cellar because you guys always have new topical shit. And yeah. I'm always like curious. I'm like, oh, what's your angle going to be on uh, Dylan Mulvaney on the Bud Light thing? Yeah. What's, what's your angle going to be on this story? Like, I, I'm just, I know you're going to have something. So yeah. The Dylan Mulvaney thing has been a tough sell. You know, nobody wants to hear. Well, it's the first time I ever jerked off to a beer can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that topic is so uh, nerve wracking that even if you're positive, they're like, "Well, I don't know. Is he being facetious? What is going on here?" Yeah, I, I put nervous. up a clip about it, and it's like I, I'm sure that people are split on it. I'm sure yeah. some people think like, "Oh, just when they get when they give you a series, but no, but you, well, you really need to see. Shut yeah, up. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I just don't care. I'm making fun of something. I'm joking about something." I don't care if you you don't like it. Don't. Yeah. What do you want to tell you? Right, right. There's, there's no final conclusion we're gonna have where we walk away as yeah. gentlemen who understand <laughs> each other. I did a joke. You don't like it. That's the end of it. There you go. And I don't know why people are this angry. I get it. It's a weird choice. Obviously, it's a it's controversial not a lot choice. Of people. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are Kid Rock shooting shit with a machine gun. He's yeah. shooting Bud Light cam. Sure. I'm like. That'll show him. I tell you, yeah, that guy, exactly. he doesn't really, that guy doesn't fuck around. I mean, he doesn't like a beer can. He shoots it. Get out of, it. Get out of his way. You know, yeah, of course he doesn't like trans people. He looks like fucking Fiona Apple. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fake rebellion. It's a fake thing from all these guys because, like, it, it's simply an advertising thing. Bud Light has people who are probably just mostly like these guys that are like a certain type. And people are like, you should know your core audience. Well, yeah, dummy. They want to expand their core. You know, what, what is a bunch of Bud Light fans right. get together as, as a group? <laughs> it's, it's, out, it's an alcohol that they want to expand to other people. So right. they probably want young trans people. And they get this hot, like, you know, uh, um, I should say, yeah, 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 a uh, hot uh Relevant, relevant young trans person. There you go. Uh, I'm not saying the hot is wrong, but I'm just that's just not my. Yeah. Um. You know. Not your tiny, type. Yeah. yeah. It's also a reminder that they have the guns because when Chick Fil A said they were against gay marriage years ago, there were no. There were no uh, left wing people like, see this chicken breast? I'm going to fucking shoot it. You <laughs> know, it's, true. That's it's true. a reminder like this. It, there's different forms of protest. Yes, yes, exactly. There's boycott and picketing, and then there's yeah. AK 47. That's why I don't eat a Chick fil A. I don't like it, and I don't like the fact that they were against gay people. I just like, fuck them. But I'm not going to tell anybody else not to eat there. I don't yeah. care who sure. else goes there. I just, I'm like, eh, fuck them. It's yeah. a good product. I don't feel the need. I know everybody loves it. I, I should try it. I didn't love it. But I don't feel the need to put a bunch of shit in front of a lake and walk around and go, <laughs> Huh? Right. It, all, it all tastes pretty much the same to me. So if I'm gonna eat fried chicken, I'll fucking I'll go to the place that wasn't vocal. Right, about, uh, we're against gay marriage. But I do think it's like this religious thing. They're all about religion, Christianity. Yeah. But what about the other groups overseas who don't like the gays? Why well, don't people boycott that? Uh, because uh, Christianity is is like the OG, and it's a safer one to boycott. It's safer because people aren't worried that somebody who's Christian they might have like an occasional abortion doctor shooter. I'm not saying they're all great, yeah. But you're not worried that Christians are going to run into your place of business with an explosive. So oh, people criticize what they feel safe. Is that what Christianity it is? is the safe one to go after? Right. Other pe uh, people feel like they're going to be in danger going after Jews are safe to go after. Like people go after Jews too. Yeah. But I think Christians and Jews are the ones that people feel like they can get away with it. Mm. But other religions are afraid will respond violently. And you could be called xenophobic. Yeah, as I guess well, so. Going after a different race or skin color or whatever. Yeah, I guess so. so I that, mean, I, I don't know why anybody. I just cares. don't think it fits their narrative. Maybe I think that's yes. another part of it. Yeah, exactly.
I want to ask you because I'm looking at you and it's Norm and Bob Saget behind you, and I'm remembering that you did the Saget oh. roast. Two who are and one who should be. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that was a you had a great set in that roast. That was a great roast. I remember. Uh, I mean, Norm's set was so oh, fucking, amazing. That was the ama- famous anti-comedy yeah. Norm speech. Or yeah, set. he kind of. I mean, was there a point? I watched that live, and I remember being like, "What is he doing?" Yeah. And then by the end, I was like, "This is amazing, brilliant." I mean, yeah, it was very funny. The crowd was kind of in and out on it, but it was still funny. Like of I, I, you knew it was weird, and I had to address it. But uh, people thought like he didn't get what Norm was. Of course, I fucking got. I'm doing stand up 15 years at that point. I yeah. got it. It was funny. Right, right. I enjoyed yeah. it. But you're at a roast. I'm not going to stand up there and just applaud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guy. I'm going to make fun of him. And then you had a great line. Well, how did you come up with that blueberries line? Um, I just I have very very limited movie taste, and I was like, thank God something fucking uh, falls into the ungolden pond uh, <laughs> universe. <laughs> right. But he had a great comeback. He had a great comeback. He had a great line. Of, We'd all love to watch Henry Fonda picking blueberry. I mean, it was perfect. Was Holding great. the newspaper, and he folded it and goes, well, who wouldn't want to? I mean, <laughs> he's such a fucking beast. Yeah, he was awesome. And and Saget was such a... So I was only on that roast because Bob requested me. Like, wow. uh, I you know, Comedy Central never put me on any of that stuff. But mm. Bob is like, I want Jim on it. And he was a good dude, man. He was a really uh, sweet guy. And uh, I... I you know, he's one of those guys. I remember I sent a dirty text to a girl about who used to jerk me off, but I accidentally sent it to him. Ah. And uh, that became like this great bonding moment between yeah. us because for years we laughed about it. But I sent him something about it was like a code, like, hey, I think I really need a hand. And he writes back, he's like, what? And I'm like, oh, fuck. And oh. I, I told him and he was fine with it. Yeah, of all the comics, probably the best one to send it to on accident. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Because you know. he's the dirtiest guy ever. Yeah, he was a bit of a pig. <laughs> <laughs> but a nice guy. And one of the most famous guys I've ever been around. Like, you couldn't go anywhere. Him sure. and Sherman Hemsley. Whoa. Um, who I remember me and Voss saw him do stand-up at Caroline's yeah. one time. And it was kind of sad. It was like half full, and he's kind of coming on and off to the Jeffersons. Yeah. But we went down to the cellar with him to have wings. What? And homeless wow. guys screaming. At, like, everybody knew wow. that. Fucking I sent him guy. a dirty text once. <laughs> did, you, did you really? Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, what does Weezy's <laughs> pussy taste like? <laughs> what? That's hilarious. You, you hung out with him. You yeah, know who, I know. I loved him. You know who had that was a deep cut? You're going to have to Google this one, kids at home. Barry Sobel. I would walk around Midtown with Barry Soul. Every black guy in New York would come out of windows, Barry, hey, Barry. And I was wow, like, what wow. the fuck? He but did... he was on Eddie Murphy's show or once, in 227 once. Oh. That was it. I thought it was a hit thing. He used to do a stand-up where Barry Sobel used to do, like, hip-hop. Like, yeah, you know, just, yeah. like, the white rapper. He was, like, he a Beastie played... Boy type guy. Yes, yeah, before yeah. anybody did that in comedy, really. Yeah. Barry Sobel started that. Wow. And the Dan- that was an epic Dangerfield lineup. It was, like, Barry Sobel, Robert Schimmel, Bill Hicks. Ooh. It was, like... Was that the Dice one or no? Dice was on it, too. Wow. Carol Leifer, uh, Dom Herrera. Wow. I remember that one because I watched that one, like, a ton. Yeah. Schimmel was so fucking Schimmel was amazing. I think... Uh, that Dice, uh, he said that one of those other guys, it was either Sobel or it might have been Robert Schimmel, one of them was going to wear a leather jacket, and Dice was the guy who wore it, and then they said, no, 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 Dice wears the jacket. Like, <laughs> oh, only Dice. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first place I was when I saw Dice. Like, you don't usually remember that with comics, but I was 18, yeah. and I was dating this girl, and she's like, Jim, come in here. This guy's so dirty. And I sat down, and we watched it, this Dangerfield special, and it's like, it, it, I'd never seen anything like No, that Dice. shit, that was insane. It, it was so innovative and original yeah Kennison too I mean yeah. it's crazy how many amazing comics came from those Rodney specials oh, yeah. I remember seeing Nick Seinfeld DiPaolo too was did Seinfeld that. come yeah. from that yeah he was on that Roseanne right? yeah Roseanne I remember Robert Townsend Bob yeah. Nelson yeah. yeah, Robert Townsend. Did Bob Nelson die or no? Was he sick? He maybe he was sick. His career did, <laughs> but I I think he's in Long Island. Ah, uh, he, I I don't know Bob. But I heard he was sick, and I was like, he didn't die, did he? No, I don't think okay. so. He's got the helmet on. He's fine. All right. <laughs> Feel bad saying that. I, you never want to wonder if a comedian died. It sounds disrespectful. Yeah. Right, for right, sure. right, right. But uh, you know, I'll I'll cover that part. All right. But <laughs> wait, you were gonna say something, Robert Townsend. <laughs> Um, oh, maybe not. No, it was Robert. There was another name. It was uh, Dan- oh Nick DiPaolo. DiPaolo. First time I saw Nick, I remember it was on him and Janine, and I forget who else was. I was an HBO Young Comedian special. I remember those specials were fucking great sure. too. But I watched Nick DiPaolo talking about if if uh, testing like monkeys can cure AIDS, like because people were complaining about primate testing. Mm-hmm. I was like, this guy is fucking mean. Yeah, he's great. His jokes were like, it, yeah. he was just like 
He's a machine, DePaulo. He was, so, I mean, his first Letterman is lights out. It's so yeah. good, and it's clean, and it's still great. Yeah, Nick is a very underrated comic. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a great comic. He's got comic. some of the classic jokes I always think about on the road. He's got so many good road jokes. I mean, I think about the one about uh, checking out the hotel and seeing a, a poop in your toilet, and I, I called the front desk and said, you know, most hotels leave a mint on your pillow. <laughs> That's such a great joke. <laughs> great joke. And just the way he would talk about, is there anything we could do to make your, your, your stay better? Oh, yeah, how about you Take the jet engine out of the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking, just a shitty, cranky vibe. It's so funny, man. So funny. He's got that great joke about he gets hurt and he goes to the uh, emergency room and he goes, I don't want to say I waited a long time, but the guy before me had a musket wound. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's fucking and then the brilliant. Tag, you know the tag. The tag is, there, is, there, is there a John Quincy Adams here? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking machine. And what I like about Nick is I've been in like writer situations with him. We did when Tough Crowd started. It was like, it was. Colin, I think, and Ken Ober in one room. Nick and Geraldo wrote in the other room. Holy wow. shit. Like, they had different offices. And, you know, Sherrod, Brian Tucker were out in this main office, and me and Keith uh, were in one, getting nothing done. Like, yeah. Nick and Geraldo and Colin and Ken Ober, they were writing sketches, and me and Keith did zero. Did absolutely <laughs> nothing. But Nick is comfortable pitching jokes. Like, he's not ashamed to pitch jokes and fire, whether it works or not, in a room. And I, I always admired that because I'm so afraid of doing that. Like, right. I'm so ashamed. Oh, of course. I don't collaborate well with guys. I like, you write stuff or whatever, and then I'll look at it and yeah. I'll write you back. It's right. like, I don't collaborate well in the moment. Well, throwing it out there, it's so vulnerable. And when it, when it bombs, it fucking stings. Yeah, yeah, because it's other guys who know what funny is. Exactly. I can't blame them for being stupid. Yeah, they get it. They just, <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. comics, you know. Uh. So I, remember, I, I remember reading in your book, you said it was something about uh, a tough crowd. You would do a joke where you would ask people how they're doing and then just slam the door. Slam the door in their face, face. yeah. Uh, and the only people you didn't do it to were, were John. Stewart and Paul Mooney. Oh, I don't remember. Did I not do it to yeah, those guys? I think, I think you said in the book you were like, I'm, I was too nervous to do it to Paul Mooney. Probably, yeah. Cause I, I, I wanted that. Mooney to like me because he uh, he wrote for Pryor and I love Richard Pryor so much. And Mooney was actually, he was a weird, like I didn't know him well, but he was very nice to me. I guess because we had done that before and he had been on Opie and Anthony. And he was one of those guys that would like test you a little bit to see if you can handle being teased and, mm. and he was always responsive if you hit back like he yeah. was never he wasn't a baby about it uh but I, I didn't know him very well who got mad at me hal sparks wow i think got mad at me because i got everybody and it used to be i would always be happy that patrice or nick would like i would stand out and say like, so you've been on the road i would just kind of put my hand on the door and i would see patrice start to laugh because he knew what was coming because uh, no comic doesn't want to talk about their road experience sure how's sure. the road been well i've been in that fucking door coming closed <laughs> oh it was like beating cancer that <laughs> feeling <laughs> but most people probably laughed at that though all of them did yeah. hal i think was i didn't know him well or, or at all so i think he might have thought i was a dick I think Colbert really enjoyed. Like, I got a few guys wow. that you wouldn't think. Yeah, um, but, but he's like an improv guy. He probably was like, he probably. Hey, he loved it. He's yeah. like, yeah, this guy's a douche, and he he got it. He was he yeah. was fine with it. But I think that Hal is the one, and I didn't remember not doing it to John or, but you know, John at the Daily Show. I was probably yeah. like, who the fuck am I? Yeah, you know, True. He's, it's humiliating to. Because <laughs> well, really, he would like it. I think he's a fun guy. Yeah, but I didn't have the faith in, in, in like, you know what I mean? Like, it was Jon Stewart, so I probably was trying to be respectful. Yeah, but you've met everybody. I mean, you got a, a, I've been to your apartment. Just the people on your wall alone, the photos you have with people is insane. Yeah, I have. Uh, I've met every hero I've met, I think. Wow. I think I've been lucky in that way. I got to meet Kennison briefly. It was just like a five minute. He came out to the open mic at Rascals. And I didn't do photos back then, but he talked to some of the young comics and I got him to sign a napkin, Oh, cool. which I still have. Um, wow. Yeah. I was like, I was happy. I got to say hello to him, Richard Pryor. Very what? brief. Yeah. I, I didn't get to talk to him. Uh, yeah, I lit his cigarette. I was with Patrice actually what? at the comedy store in 1995 or six. How bad would that be if you lit him on fire? I would have been, dude. <laughs> Yeah, because he had he was looking for his lighter, and I just lit his cigarette. And yeah, I, I, it would have been hilarious if a wind came through. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> but Patrice didn't walk up and talk to him. Uh, but I'm glad I did, and I got him to sign my business card, which I still I used to get autographs on the back of my business card because it felt like it was personal. Right. So I got him to sign that, but I never got to talk to him. It was brief. 
Yeah. And I wish I had a photo. Wow, man. Remember business cards? I used to have 2,000 printed yeah. from Vistaprint for like eight bucks, and I would pass them out at open mics <laughs> like a fucking chooch. I had a little joke on it, too. It said, Jim Norton, build discreetly to your Visa or MasterCard. Uh, you know, a little phone uh, sec, you know, folks, for those that like that. <laughs> or the, or the, you, they would tell you, uh, older comics would always be like, you got to stand by the door and hand out your business yeah. card. Yeah. Like, Fuck, well, then I'm not going to make it. Yeah. No, no, I can't <laughs> do it. I love the guy, too. It says, like, director, photographer, comedian, writer, actor. And you're like, all right, what is this, vaudeville? Yeah. You can do everything? Come on. Or are you getting Everyone a head? I had him. I had him. It was humiliating. Yeah. When was your first headshot? Do you remember? I, I was kind of talked into it. An older comic named Gemini, uh, John Lombardi, like, you got to get headshots. Like, I just waited. Do you remember your first one? Yeah, Mindy Tucker. We shot it on, like, the sidewalk in Brooklyn. And that was it. It was just a shitty... Yeah. You know, it was I bad. I don't remember who it was, but yeah, I remember getting them, and I'm like, yeah, I look fucking worse than I look now. Yeah, yeah. it's embarrassing, right? It's embarrassing. They're the worst. I even see them at the cellar, and I'm like, ooh, these are all bad. Isn't that your favorite part of it, though? Like, when you do, like, the comedy cabaret in Doylestown, or even, like, the, or the old Atlanta punchline, I love looking at all those headshots on love the it. wall of people I don't know. Because, like, when that guy, you know what I mean? You know, Mike Stetton, you know, yeah, he's from fucking yeah. Oklahoma. <laughs> right. He, you see a guitar stem. Right. And you're like, that guy had the same dream I had. Yeah. It's like a fucking mini museum. It's like, it's cr- you go to the Royal Oak Comedy Castle. It, like, wraps around the Oh, club, yeah. And like, Gary Shanlin, uh, Leno. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of, you're like, holy shit, they played this room? Yeah. Right. But then, yeah, you're right. The ones you've never heard of, you're like, what the fuck is their what story? What happened? Damn. What is OD, their life? kids, death, suicide, what happened? Well, I remember one time, this was like years ago, Joe Mackey and I were at the comic strip and we were pointing, we were like, there's some heavy guy with a mustache and we were like laughing, we we're like, who's that guy? And someone walked over, they were like, He's not a comic. He was the guy who would do the delivery for the cash, and one night he got shot in the head. Oh, oh wow. Jeez. We're like, oh. Jesus. We're like, well, he's fat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tape we're a flower trying. to his fucking picture. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, yes. we like, you can't do that to us. <laughs> yeah. No, but some of those... Uh, some of those headshots are like it's amazing, man. Amazing of the time. You yeah. can tell the time they yes. were taken, and I'm I would never get bored of standing there looking at people I don't know who they are. I could do that all day because I'm just like, what fucking happened to you? I know. What yeah. mistakes did you make? Were you not funny? Was this a part time thing? Were you a drunk? Yep. I love those stories too. A lot too. of drunks. A lot of drunks. In, in the eighties, I bet a lot of cokeheads. Oh yeah. Know? Don't you love those stories of guys who like, hey, he was on the Tonight Show, and then he drank it. Like you learn from those guys. You're like, I'm so glad I didn't fucking. If wherever I go, I go, but I didn't wreck it by being sure. self destructive. Were you? When did you become sober? I was eighteen. I was a, again. A, I was a young fucking suburban uh, uh, problem child. But how did you know at eighteen to go sober? Like I would go, maybe I'll drink less or I won't black out. But to go sober has got to be tough. My father was sober in a program, and I used to, you know, I went to rehab for wrist slicing and mm, you know calling wow. the FBI drunk. I used to call the Klan members and tell them how wrong they were. I was, just, <laughs> I was an asshole. Suburban angst, you know. Well, this could be worse. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you called him like, you guys are doing great. I remember that. Dude, I fucking, I remember I read some book on the Klan, and uh, I was a little SJW at 15, and uh-huh. I, I looked up his number on information, and I, he was a Klan preacher, and I called him, and I'm like, it's wrong that you're racist. And he actually talked to me on the phone. He's Whoa. like, well, you know, I don't do that anymore. I left, and then we had like a chat. Wow. He talked to me on the phone, this guy. And then I, you know, I, and then I, I don't remember what happened after that, but. You joined? Sure, I, I <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, now that that pussy's yeah. out, there's, there's an opening. <laughs> That's amazing. You called an ex clan. Yeah. That's you dial insane. 411 and you dial 155, whatever the number was, to that local thing. And yeah. th- the guy got on. I couldn't believe he got on the fucking phone. It was wow. Him. That's crazy. I thought people were accessible now with Twitter and shit. You could yeah. just call a fucking He's like, I still don't wizard. like Jews, but the rest <laughs> of them are okay. <laughs> yeah, he admitted that he was wrong about it. I guess he was realized, like, oh, somebody's calling my. The phone was great back then because you didn't have to worry. Like I remember calling in, I called in bomb threats to my high school. I actually cleared the high school. I was like, we were all drunk, uh, me and my friends. I used to call this nun thing that they would like rescue problem kids, and I would always tell them I was being molested. And oh, people, like, good and, times. And we would all giggle. Yeah. Um, but I cleared the school with a bomb threat. Whoa. Like, I get that. I remember watching from my friends. Like we were watching from his patio, or whatever. We could see people walking into the parking lot. Whoa. Because I had called in. A, so it's like I get why. 
I would never have been a school shooter, but I get why people want that impact. Of course. Like why you want people to, like, you've done something that moved the needle. Yes, yes. And when you do clubs on the road, I call in a bomb threat. <laughs> right. But That would explain why the curtain's always pulled. It's, a, it's the worst one on early show Saturday when they pull the curtain back. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't know that was a curtain. Right. <laughs> I, know, I, I thought I, I was just half sold. Right. It was a quarter. <laughs> but uh, I saw Tracy Morgan. This is years ago. He was on uh, Stern. And he said he would shit. He would go to the white neighborhood to the community pool and shit in the pool. And Howard Stern's like, why'd you do that? He's like, because everyone had to get out of the pool. It was like a little power thing, kind of like the bomb threat. Wow. I'm causing these kids to get out. This yeah. is on me. I did this. Yeah, yeah. you have the, an the, impact. The poop in the pool is a little more hands-on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then, and, and then the, the downside is you've had impact, but you're now standing with your own shit <laughs> in water. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they can kind of they can kind of pick you out of a lineup sure. at that point. That's yeah, true. that's the guy. He's yeah, still the guy there. With fecal matter on his elbows <laughs> in a semicircle. <laughs> he pooped in the pool. Yeah. That was a big move. He said, "That's hilarious." Good People for did him. it. This I respect the, that. The early school shooting was shit in the pool. <laughs> Nobody yeah. died. Yeah. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Babel, baby. If you're taking a summer trip abroad in 2023, you might want to be able to walk the walk and tuck the tuck. That's why you shouldn't go anywhere without preparing with Babel. Babel is the language learning app with addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons. So there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I agree. I travel a lot. I was just down in Mexico, and it embarrassed me. It embarrassed me that I don't know Spanish. I took it in high school. Uh, there's the subway. Sorry. It's a real New York experience. I'm underground, comedically and literally. But, uh, yeah, get on Babbel. Learn a language. Expand your mind. Queef it up. With lessons that take a little under 10 minutes a day, you start having a real-life conversation as little as three weeks. Hey, hey. Choose from 14 different languages, including French, Italian, Portuguese, and more. Babel lessons are voiced by real native speakers, not computers, and can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes to help you on your way. Plus, comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. That's pretty good. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babble.com slash drunk. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash drunk for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. All right, spring cleaning is here, boys. Time to clean out those nasty holes. Oh, yeah. Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has it all. The Lawn Mower 4.0 Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, your hair, oof. We got some old listeners. You need that. Tell me. I, I'm looking at yeah. you in the library. Ugh. S- trim it. Feature proprietary advanced uh, skin t- uh, safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. I, yeah, I trim with this stuff, and I, it's scary putting a razor to your shaft, but I'm not scared when I'm using this shit. Yeah, you're I, right. I, my ball sack, like, hey, we've all had that fear. You know, you, you bleed out. The little fluid comes out of your ball sack. Not with this stuff. You got that right. The package also comes with their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Guess you get smelly down there. Yep. And Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Smell as clean as a baby's bung. Holy oh. Always use the right tools for the job. Head to their website and check out all their tools to help you upgrade your hygiene routine. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code DRUNK. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. Here, here. Hey, hey, folks, drink Z-Biotics. You know it, you love it. You can't afford to waste a day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before. Z-Biotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. Uh... It was invented by Ph.D. scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink alcohol, oh, when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough day. z produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but it's in your gut, where you need it most. Drink z before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself 
Go to zbiotics.com slash drunk to get 15% off your first order when you use code drunk at checkout. Thank you. Zbiotics is back with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics slash drunk and use code drunk at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. That's yeah. like, I mean, that other kid, do you see the, they had the article about this kid? By the way, his last name's Sturgeon, which mm. like, uh, you know, they're like hoop star, popular kid, shoots up a school. I guess he shot like four people in the bank yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. the Kentucky. Yeah. Louis Tennessee. From, oh, was it Louisville? Oh, right. I think. Oh, wow. He was a bank bank guy. He yeah. had gotten fired. And he, um, but there's a weird, I wonder if he had CTE because he had like this, had like I think OJ had CTE. I, I'm guessing they'll figure out when he's dead. Oh, yeah. But they, they say that he got so many concussions, he had to wear a helmet when he played basketball. I, I thought Whoa. I thought it was a typo in the article. I thought he was like it was like well you know he's baseball and he wore like a helmet in the field or something. Yeah, I've never seen a dude play basketball in a fucking helmet. Yeah, I've never it either. looked insane. Yeah, he looked like an ass. Yeah, and you know so I think that's probably <laughs> wow. you know maybe they'll and he was dunking in the picture. I'm like maybe don't show a picture of the school shooter <laughs> throwing down. Uh, yeah, exactly. Cool <laughs> look. Exactly. Show him going like this like he got fouled. <laughs> well, you can't show him taking a shot. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Very good, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I should get a helmet. But, yeah. Um, I got to pee. I'll be right back. Well, I think All there was right. a Colorado guy. They stopped him. He was going to shoot up a school, and they stopped him. Um, I kind of vaguely remember that. It was, was like a week ago. Was it like from shit he had written? Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think they caught him on the way in with the gun, and they just grabbed him. I was thinking today, I was talking to my trainer at the gym, they should have something on guns where like all apps can detect when there's a gun nearby. Oh. So like if a gun gave off, like like when you, you have that find my when you lose your keys. Yes. Some kind of an app that can tell you when like everything but with police or something. Right. So you don't know when they're coming to bust you, you get the fucking alert. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, gun owners would never go for having a, a little thing put on their weapon, but still. I guess, but he can make it a law and, and some guys just have them right here anyway. So they're already visible. Yeah, but uh, well, that's but, a great call. I know, but nobody will go for nobody it. Nobody will go for it. Well, Not, do you guys stay on while he's pissing? You're good, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay, good. All right, I good. never piss. I've wet the bed as a kid, so I built my bladders this big. I did too, and I I I've wet the bed as an adult. I yeah. pissed the bed multiple times as an adult. Even with my girlfriend in bed, I'm like, ah, I pissed a little. I've bit. done that too. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Well, I only do it when I black out drinking, but you do it. Sober. I'm sober, totally sober. Wow. Yeah, one too many coffees after 3 p.m. and I piss the bed. Yeah, this is uh, what's bedtime for you because you got the morning show. I I get I go to bed by twelve, and okay. I get up at like six forty five. But I usually don't fall asleep till like twelve forty five, one o'clock. I'm a bad sleeper. Same. Yeah, and I get up at like uh, like I envy your life though. Like when you look at you and Sam, you guys who are doing like that nightlife. I, I love that life of going going out one o'clock in the morning. I got a spot, or you can go to like the party at the cellar tomorrow night. I uh, I, I got to be home like by nine thirty, ten o'clock, like a fucking old lady. It sucks. But do you kind of like the structure? Like all right, I, I know where my money's coming in. I know where my my job is. Is there anything to that, or do you like, or do you hate the structure? No, I like the fact that it makes me go to the bank. I'm, I'm able to go to the bank and do normal person things. Oh yeah, because when I have all night to myself, I'm just basically I'm, I'm online all night. I'm jerking off. I'm watching yeah. porn. I, it's just dysfunctional. I do my spots. I go to bed at seven a.m. Yeah, like when I was doing Tough Crowd, I would go to bed at like uh, seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. Wow, wake up sometimes. If I had uh, uh, no episode that day, I would sleep until 4.30. Oh. Um, or if I had an episode, I would go to bed at like 5 and get up at 1. Like, it was just totally upside down, and then nothing yeah. gets done. Nothing gets done, and you become depressed because yes. you're like, oh, now I'm up and the sun's down. And then now I'm up or down and the sun's up. It, it's, it fucks with your cere cerebellum. I don't know. Serotonin, whatever Serotonin. whatever it is, yeah. We're talking about going to just being upside down. Like, I envy your schedules that you guys are just out, like, living road comic lives. Like, I love that schedule. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah like, being up all night. Like, oh, yeah? Yeah. And you just can't do it because of the radio, you mean? Yeah, it sucks. Like, it's like having a it, – it, it lets you have, like, a real life where you can – okay, I can do these things that I would never – I wouldn't have a mortgage if I was up all night because I would just would never would have went to the bank. Yeah. But now I'm like, yeah, I kind of feel like a regular person. And you still get a set in. I do two a night. Yeah, oh, I do two a two, night. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I usually do Monday, th uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, two a night. I was only doing one before the pandemic, but when, after the pandemic, I was like, I wanted to just kind of get my shit back, and I just love doing two a night now. Two a night's huge. How much does the radio burn you out writing though? It helps because you start thinking of in directions you wouldn't think of. Yeah, I like, agree. You, you're reading news stories every day, and you're like, oh, yeah, is there an angle on that? Is there not a funny angle on that? And mm. normally the answer is, of course, no. But, I mean, you try, and yeah. uh, it, it gets your mind working. 
That's I smart. Agree. You guys use, I mean, you do so much. I mean, that helps you do so much topical stuff, I guess. Sometimes you do podcasts. So you're just like, I just feel like it, it hurts my writing because I'm just like, I only have so much creativity in my head per day and I'm just burnt the fuck out. But I guess if you have news stories, you're like, this is like a goal. And it's right. that day. It's it's yeah. that, it's a lot. It's like, it's live. Like people are listening now, so I yeah, know that yeah. it's like whatever we're doing, we're gonna burn. Um, so get it out of the way, and then tomorrow it's got to be something new. So it kind of feels like you have to rifle through news stories real quick and see what's if there's anything. A lot of times we don't get to them, but I read them anyway. Yeah, I think that's healthy, and then that's a good exercise. Just going, all right, I need a Dylan Mulvaney joke. Yeah, you know, it gets well, the brain going. Well, I write on stage. I'm really Colin is so good. Like you'll see him with like a chicken scratch yeah. papers, and I don't not do it out of artistic anything. I'm just not good at that. Um, I'm much better at writing on stage, and part of it is probably laziness. Like I just, sure. I get an idea. Like you know how it is. You just talk it through and see yeah. what's there. But writing it down is probably so much better. I think so because I always say I'm going to write it on stage, and then I get up there and that wave of like, oh, this isn't going that well, and I get frazzled, and then I can't think of anything. Yeah, I've gotten used to that over the decades. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, did I fucking eat shit last night? Oh, not, e <laughs> not even aggressive, but I was bombing, and they didn't hate me. They were just like, no, we're not enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. And I don't know if it was, it was a bunch of trans stuff after Judy Gold had gone on, so maybe we hit the same topic. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We might have hit it in a similar way. I haven't seen Judy set in years, so yeah. it could have been that with like, yeah, we just kind of heard something along this sure. highway. I don't know. Yeah, and Judy rants and raves, so she can cover everything. Yeah, she's funny, too. She's Hilarious. Funny. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever um, feel like following people at the cellar with the amount of new stuff you do? I mean, I, I feel this sometimes. You're following some new guy at the cellar, and they just are murderers, and they're doing their greatest hits. Yeah, the A game. Yeah, and then you go on, you're like, this happened in the news today, and the crowd just like, what? Yeah, if you're not as zippy as they are, they kind of like, oh, is this guy bombing? Because some suck? of the new comics there are fucking killers. They're oh, killing, yeah. yeah. And, they're, and they're not doing new shit because they, they're at the... The seller, and they don't want SDC. I don't like SDC me bomb. I've been there since course. 1995, and she walks in. I'm like, ah, 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 panic, <laughs> fucking but, but John Bobbitt. Like I just yeah. fucking, I, I fall apart. So no, I don't really, I don't care who I'm following there uh, because there are so many of them kill. Um, and on the road, you got to follow guys that are fucking murdering. And yeah. over the years at the cellar, you know, you got to follow Chappelle. Like I remember Oy. one weekend, I was I, every he was working on his Showtime special, so he was doing longer sets. And, you know, and I was on after him every. You know, you just you get used to like not giving a fuck. Yeah. But uh, the top, the only thing I care about is like I'll ask somebody, hey, did you do anything on the Dalai Lama? Like if Rogel comes off for anybody, because you don't want to do the exact same right, totally. subject, right. but. Um, but then you have guys like David Tell who are so good that he goes on last, and everyone's done the Dalai Lama, but his is still the best one. Because it never, you never see it. It's so infuriate. You I never know. see it coming. I know he's that good. He, like yet yeah, you never see his joke. Like yeah. he throws a curveball, even though we know how jokes are structured. And fucking Dave, every fucking time. I know I, I, comes I, out of left field. I wonder if he's in his apartment going, no, no. Is he is he punching himself in the face? Is he pacing? Like how does he come up with it? I don't know. Probably he's probably some weird process. Yeah, he probably just sits on the toilet and flip flops smoking. And comes <laughs> <laughs> it's probably something that you wouldn't think of. Yeah, Anthony Jeselnik would do the same shit too. Where like I can, I don't. Yes. I never guess the punchline. And you're trying the whole time. It'll, you're it'll like, okay, like, I got it. Yeah. yeah, but I never guess it. No, same. And with him, it's it's it is frustrating because Jeselnik is so good. He's very much. He has a certain pace to his jokes, and a certain we're walking here, we're walking here, and then I'm gonna hey, and the punchline is still coming from where you don't see it coming from. He's great. Yeah, he's yeah. really really good. Who was yeah. a good writer? I just saw. Um, I was like, fuck the uh, Ricky Velez. I watched Ricky Velez at the Patrice Benefit. Oh yeah, and yeah. he was talking, and he followed Dice, who fucking killed. Um, wow. And then Ricky goes on, and he's talking about a soup kitchen and depression and all this real shit. Yeah. But it was so funny. I'm like, this guy is really good because the writing is so good, and he, he killed. Like, he oh, followed him great. with yeah. really personal stuff. Yeah. He didn't fucking panic. Uh, it was good to watch a guy like that. He's not even a young comic anymore. He's been around, but I've not known him panic. He was probably. 18 or 19. Yeah. yeah. I remember he was just this kid like sprawled out in the fucking yeah. back room at the Broadway comedy club. Right, right. But uh, yeah, no, it's awesome. It's awesome to see like people just, you know, be become who they are. You know? To yeah. watch them not panic. Like yeah. to watch yes. a guy in front of 2,500 people following a guy who is a legend and who is 
really funny, still yeah, funny. Still Dice funny. is still funny. Yeah. And to watch this guy just walk up and do his own fucking thing and he's it a works. Pro. Yeah, it, 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 like I don't care how long someone's in the game. It, like you watch a guy like that and you're inspired by it. You're like, yeah, man, you, you just do what you do. Don't ever worry about what the guy in front of you. Totally, does. totally. Yeah, that Patrice benefit is so fucking fun because we all do all these little sets all over the city, and then to get to do this theater in the middle of Manhattan with these le- it's like Bill Burr, John Stewart was on that one, right? Yeah, yeah. So John, yeah, insane. Did you close the door in his face? Uh, no, I didn't. I forgot that I had done that. But I, I'm, but I'm probably even after all this time still too much of a coward to do it to him because it's like, hey, he's gonna get something soon. You know, I know. I would fuck, maybe he'll have me on. Um, I heard yeah. he threw, oh, sorry. Oh no. I heard he threw out a couple of R's and F's out. Out there he did yes yes i love it he all t- right it's stewart what about uh stewart how well did he know patrice's comedy because i remember when geraldo passed away he did a really nice piece on geraldo mm. but I, I didn't know like how familiar john is with patrice i don't know man i'm sure that by this point like you know ricky gervais loves patrice like yeah. he says oh, like, really? his favorite comedian so because of everything in the special and all this material, he might have re- like you, a lot of guys just go back and watch stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how familiar, but I'm sure he knew his stuff because we were doing Tough Crowd while he was doing The Daily Show. So you couldn't not know Patrice. He yeah. was on so often. Um, An Elephant in the Room. Killer. Is, uh, I, I've never seen the whole thing. I stopped. Really? No, I was there when he shot some of it. I think I went in between shows to see him, but um, or I came in because we had the same manager, Jonathan. So I might have stopped there. I think he might have been on stage. I don't remember, but it's hard to. I can't really watch his shit. It's too. It's too difficult. Ah, but occasionally, so close. Yeah, it makes me sad. But I'll watch like an occasional O and A bit or something. I'll listen to him. Like it always makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah. He was so good off the cuff, and his stand up was great. According to Will Sylvins, he did two hours that night. The, oh uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The elephant in the room. There's so much. There's so much unreleased stuff too. That like, eh, would he want that? Would he not want that? Right. Like, who knows? But that's tough. I know. Right. But hey, if I die and it can make people money in my family, it just release it. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I don't think exactly. Patrice would give a fuck. Are you gonna cancel me? Yeah. He well, loved they his put mother. Out the Mr. P album, which yeah, did, which did is that, right. Did that have his blessing or? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I know Jonathan, who's again still my manager. Um, I, I know that he's careful about that stuff and he's very sure. protective and he was really good with getting like all these royalties and kind of because Patrice was not the most fucking organized uh, guy yeah. with his finances. So Jonathan was good at helping get everything in, or- in order and get to his family. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, his, st- his O&A stuff. I still go back and listen to it. It's great because that's one thing not to blow you, but you guys <laughs> added a, a, a buddy element to comedy. Comedy was... It always had edge. You had your Kinnisons, your Dice, your Eddie Murphy. But you guys had that tough crowd group. And I think people love a group. You know, people like, these are the Rogan guys. These are the L.A. guys. This is the, the this crew over here. You guys started the crew thing, I think. Well, it was also, as the internet was getting, like, all these things kind of got passed around in a different way, too. So, like, this just shitting on each other. And then Colin managed to turn it into a TV show. Right. Um, And, and we would do it all the time. And then... Just coming on Opie and Anthony, even the first version of that, which was on NEW in the afternoon, playing each other's old tapes. Oh, um, wow. And they crucified me. My oh. old stand-up from 93 was so bad. It was Who was in the room? It was Colin. That's it was brutal. Voss. Patrice might have been there and Paul Mercurio, I think. Hmm. I don't remember who was there. I want to say it was Colin, Patrice, and Voss. Um and then just having yourself crucified like that on the radio. It was yeah. humiliating. I can't imagine. Colin's like, oh, I can't even look at him. Like, but it couldn't... make you fearless at a certain point because you're like, what else can they fucking yeah. do? Yeah. It's almost like 8 Mile when he just kills right. himself. Right. And yeah. like, what else? When you get used to the, the one advantage to that, like we were just friends shitting on each other. That's all yeah. it was. Yeah. But when you are used to being called out on everything, by yes. guys who are legitimately funny, you know, Bill Burr and and, and fucking and Colin and these guys are ruthless when they call you out. Bobby, Bobby's a mean fuck. Oh, you know, yeah. Bobby Kelly is a fucking. You know what? Dude? And he, he catches himself. But these guys calling you out on stuff, you knew they were right. Like you know what I mean? Mm. Like we're taking each other to hack court, which was oh. always so hack court. From what I've heard, it's you take someone's bit and you you break down whether or not it's hack you're, you're, whether or not you're a hack and it yeah. was always Keith and Patrice and Kevin and it was like Jesus. nobody was rooting for the other guy like <laughs> <laughs> believe me, you did not have a lot of defenders it was all like we want to call you a hack yeah um, but it did make you more aware of like I have to write good stuff because again you see guys like Colin going on 
Well, when Patrice would go on, he was just such a naturally funny person. Right. You feel guilty and like, I'm going to get shit on coming with the same thing every night. I remember being on one night and just doing some weak joke and Colin walking through the room and he just went, nice writing, lazy. Ooh, and he walked wow. out and it made me laugh. I wasn't mad at him and the yeah, crowd didn't hilarious. understand, but I knew he was right. It was a fucking shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. LA, you know, New York. People are different type of fucking level sure, of shit. Sure, sure. And when you have guys that are going to make fun of you, you, you you kind of... I mean, if a comic did that now, it'd be like front page comedy talk. Gossip, yeah. yeah. They'd be like, well, look at this dick going through, talking to her mindset, heckling me, what a piece of shit. Well, also, do you think comics would ever do it to your fucking face? I feel like now it's all on social That's media. True. That's true. And yeah. now it's like to get engagement. Now right. Like, this person sucks, and it's like to oh, get retweets. And you're hate like, it. Oh, yeah, it's it's... There's no kindness behind it. Like Con what Colin's doing is actually warm. Oh yeah, and, and he knew I could take it, and he yeah. knew I would gladly yell at him. Like it, it was a friend. It was never. Right. There wasn't an ounce of anything shitty. He knew yeah. it would make me laugh. Uh, yeah, but if it was a different thing, he would have you know started a new Twitter exactly. handle anonymously. I would know who it was though. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> mumbling old idiot insulted me. <laughs> oh, I see Mark or Joe in the doorway doing this during my set. Yeah. I fucking laugh every time. Yeah. I, we dude uh, he's making the fucking stink face at Keith. Yeah. Robinson, I got yelled at for that. There was a comic, and uh, we would do it to each other all the time. You fucking suck. Like, just to try to distract each other. Yeah. So I was doing it to a comic I knew on stage at the cellar. And um, I'm like, like, fucking, yeah. And then he saw me at the cellar later that night, and he goes, what the fuck was that? Oh, yeah. He exploded on me. Whoa. Like, I was like, he was a bigger guy. I was like, what the fuck? And he goes, you fucking cocks up, blah, blah, blah. Like, really fucking vicious. Whoa. Uh, I was like, I'm sorry, man. Like, I was just having fun with you. Like, I was really, I didn't know what to do because I was, there was no ill intent. Yeah. It turned out, he, A, we didn't know each other that well, I guess, but he had just quit smoking. <laughs> and when you quit smoking, I remember I had a big fight with Colin when I quit smoking. I was crying. Like, oh, I was, wow. I was, it, your emotions are fucking crazy. Sure. The male version of being pregnant. It, right, yes, right. it really is. Yeah. Uh, and I was, we, I was so upset. And it's like, when you quit smoking, you're a fucking maniac. And he, he did apologize for that. He's like, I'm sorry, man. I just, but uh, yeah, there's, some guys didn't take as well as that. There's always something behind it. It's usually not about this thing. There's always some yeah. internal thing going on. Yeah, because I didn't mean it. I was just having fun. Yeah, it was fun course. telling someone they, st I love looking at Marina on stage. Yeah. And just, and and knowing they catch your eye, yes. and you're just like, oh. Wow, it's the last time I fucked with Ben Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. No, it wasn't Ben. I think Ben, we all know, is crazy yeah, enough yeah. to fucking throw you through a window. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard stories. Yeah, everybody knows Ben has a fucking, you know. Ben's a great guy, but you yeah. know. Yes. I see, it is funny when people try to fuck with your set. I, I was definitely drunk on stage the other night, and uh, Rachel Feinstein and Liz are in the doorway just doing this my entire set. <laughs> it's like such a great... It's fourth <laughs> grade. Turn over yeah. and see. You're like, all right, that's, that's fucking great. great. We used to. When, I remember when Voss was on stage at Caroline's one time, and you know the curtain was uh, pulled to the shock of no one. Yeah. And uh, me and Florentine were on different sides of the room, and just, like Florentine used to love to start groans. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like Voss is on, and 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 I'm on one side, and Jim is on the other. But it was Jim's thing, and he would go like. Oh, <laughs> and then you hear people groaning, and it was so we ruined his whole set. That's Forty amazing. minutes of it, and Voss is going, "What the fuck?" And he's snapping at the audience, and it really wrecked his set. And he had no idea that it was coming from us. That's that great. was satisfying. That's great. Yeah, and he's an easy guy to groan at. Yeah, oh, he is. Yeah, is he offensive? Is it awful? Who knows? Right, either both. <laughs> I'm just going to get the fedora. <laughs> when I was a young comic, I did a bringer show at Caroline's, and my mom came, and I fucking sucked. But my mom saw Rich Voss. And he said to a woman, lady, you're a two on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom turned to me. She goes, he's repulsive. <laughs> Here's why he's repulsive. Because he used the syllable two on a Tuesday. Yes. That's why he's repulsive. Yes, lady, exactly. you're a three on a Tuesday. It's funny. Or two on a Tuesday sounds like you got caught up in your word right, economy. Right, right. Two, two, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't no sound right. No. <laughs> it's just an insane thing that you go to a comedy club, you get done up, and, and Rich Voss goes, you're a two on a two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, well, had the woman heckled him or something? She probably said something he didn't like. Probably. But, it, I mean, I was laughing. But, I, yeah, it's... I did a country club gig at, like, a rich, hoity-toity Long Island country club, and it was me, Voss, Jessica Kearson, and somebody else. And everybody... I had to go first. I ate shit. I died. These people weren't having it. Kirsten goes up, murders, and then Voss was last. And I was like, how's he going to do this? 
He annihilated. He trashed everybody in the room, and they loved it. And he did it sitting on a stool. <laughs> he has a crazy because Voss is so fat. His thinking is so fat. It's like insane. yeah, he's he Voss will, will 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 butcher a word. He'll say the dumbest shit. Uh, but like he's like great minds think a lot. There's no irony. Yeah, he just yeah, doesn't right, know the expression. Right, right. But his mind, there's such a genius to the way his mind works, yeah. and he he'll just sit there, and it's so confident. He fucking murders, murders. like that. Where you think he can't follow people. Or whatever he slows them. Todd Barry, I admire too, because Todd will always talk at his own pace. Yes. He never change, and he brings people in, and that's what Voss does. He has the ability to do that. I, I, I panic. Well, it yeah, couldn't I be panic. more different, but yeah, you're totally right. I mean, and Voss, the quickness. I remember at the roast, Colin called him the master of the counterpunch. Yes, was like, holy shit, so true. That is Voss. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, and he can get beaten up for a long. It's fun, by the way, when guys like that are murdering you. Like when you walk in, like the worst would be when you would walk in and you'd hear like ha, and like Keith was already laughing before you got in, and you're like, I know I'm gonna get attacked. Yeah. But having funny people just attack you, it's fun. Like it would make me laugh that these guys who are so good at being mean, yes. are shitting on me. You can't yeah. not enjoy that. I was walking around the corner last night from the. McDougal room to the Village Underground room on my phone sending an email and I just hear look up stupid and it's Keith on a cane walking by me <laughs> I'm like he just he, he'll never say it's amazing he'll never stop I love it he also never complains too Keith is yeah. the, Keith I've never met a person who complained more when they were healthy and less when they weren't <laughs> he is fucking amazing Keith Never feels sorry for himself. No, You're right. He never complains. He does his material. He's like, ah, I'm an asshole. I deserve it. Like, Keith is a really interesting guy. The fact that he it, his material is so fucking funny. Yes. His new shit is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so funny. And he's un, he's unbreakable. Like with you being teased and made right. fun of. You, you say anything to him, he doesn't care. Yeah, he'll laugh at any. You you call him the N word, he would just laugh. Try it. Uh, <laughs> let me know how that works. I, know about that one. I bet he would. I bet he would. What? Oh, I remember, you're crazy. I remember I just seen 12 Years a Slave, and I, and I was sitting down at the table with Keith, and I was like, oh, it was excellent. He goes, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you shouldn't describe that movie as excellent <laughs> to a black man. <laughs> it was a good movie. <laughs> it was yeah. good, but I still shouldn't have said it that way. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll uh, Keith will call you out on it, but the, the guy we would always talk about Ray. Those guys were never sensitive to it. No, like, they, no, they knew where it was coming from. You were just having a conversation about what gets people in trouble, and there was never any like, "Hey, watch what you say to yeah. to Keith or Patrice or Kevin." Those guys didn't no. care. We were at the cellar one time, and it was like a headline news: this black guy was shot in Philly, and we were all like talking about it, kind of tiptoeing. And Keith goes, "What would he do?" <laughs> and so I said the story, and he's like, "He deserved it." And you're like, "Okay, there you go." Keith the proves, <laughs> but everyone else was like, "No, he's the victim." Whatever, but he was just like, "No, nah, no, nah, fuck that guy." Yeah, I've been with Keith when the police bothered us. I dropped uh, him and Patrice. Might have been him, Patrice, and, and Kevin. They lived in Woodbridge together at the time, I think. So I drove them, and it was just me and those three in a parking lot. We we're just talking, mm -hmm. and a cop pulled up and wants, "What are you guys doing here?" So I'm being, and, and Keith is, "Ah, wow, we're just talking." And I'm like, "Dude, will you fucking yeah. shut up?" Yeah, right. Immediately confrontational. Immediately. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, Keith was. Uh, he's raised in a very tough Philly area. Sure. So he, he did not get along with the police, but I've seen it firsthand how fast he went from zero, like funny Keith, uh, was out the window, and it was, "What the Whoa. fuck do you guys want?" Interesting. Damn. Yeah, which uh, you know, I, I groveled and talked my way out of a problem, but yeah. I was like, "Fucking, come on, man, what are you doing?" Damn. So. I don't know if you know this, but I had for my audition at the cellar, I had to follow you. Did you? Yeah, and it was 2013. It was the height of like the radio show. Yeah. So you got a huge pop, and people are yelling stuff at you, like inside jokes and all that. I was fucking trembling on the side of the stage. And then a girl walked by, and she was super hot, and she had huge boobs. And you were in the middle of a bit, and you are like, whoa, what's your name, sister? And she's like, I'm Sheila. And you're like, I'm going to fuck Sheila in the bathroom. And you're killing with all this shit. And I was just going up there with my dumb jokes. I was terrified. Well, obviously, you, you killed. Look at you now. I mean, you fucking got in at the cellar, and you're selling out theaters. Well, I, mean, I, my I dumb remember Sheila that joke. night, by the way, because oh. Mark was fucking... You, call, you <laughs> called me before the audition. I was terrified. And Mark is not a caller. He's a no, texter. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. fuck, Mark's calling me. Like, what is he calling about? And then... Uh, I remember I was like playing a shithole in Somerville, South Carolina. I remember wow, that week. Wow, I've never even heard of that town. I, yeah, it ain't good. Damn. But yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, that, I remember that night. Yeah, and the only the only reason I got over on the audience because they were still buzzing from your set. Uh, I just said, well, I was dating Sheila until a minute That's ago, funny. and oh. that saved me. If Damn. I didn't have that riff, I wouldn't have gotten in. That's hilarious. It's That's funny big. though. 
But it was a risk. It was a risk. She used to audition people. I think when I auditioned there, it was on a. I got in at the Cellar Danger Fields on the same day. Rick Dorfman was my manager at the time when mm. he worked for Caroline's. And I this is like before he went out on his own. And I think I don't know who you'd have to follow, but she would put you on like after Angel Salazar. Oh, he kills. And he would fucking annihilate on a late show Friday. Like it wasn't a lot wow. of times. I think now it's earlier. But back then there was only a couple of shows, so you would go on a lot of times on the Late Show Friday. Yeah, and it was it was rough. But uh, I obviously I and that's the the worst show. Usually. Always. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're drunker, they're tired, yeah. but you had to do well to. But there were less spots there anyway. You know what I mean? There was there was X amount of spots and then food spots. Right. Um, which you know I did for years. You just get paid in a meal. Was the cellar the cellar then, or was it just a club? No, it was just a club. I mean, it was the cellar, but it was half sold on a Monday. Wow. There would be, one long show started at like 9 p.m. And I did food spots for years. And Noam saw me once. And he goes, he should be on regular paid spots. So they gave me I a paid that. spot, but I bombed. Ah, I right back to food spots wow. for a while. What yeah. does that mean? You get a free meal and not a paycheck. You get 10. Yeah, it would happen at like 11 or 12. It would switch to 20-minute paid spots to 10-minute food spots. Oh. And everybody, like you know, myself, Russ Beneve, Judah, all those guys would just do 10 minutes. And you get paid in a full meal. Damn. Because yeah, that's when you want to eat midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to, or you go in earlier. Rustman Eve would always eat for six people. He was amazing. <laughs> I heard yeah. that. Watching that compulsive idiot fucking shuffle. It was inspirational. <laughs> like, Russ is getting his fucking money's worth. But it made you better. Yeah. Because you had to be funny or you wouldn't get spots anymore. CBs, where we got free meal. Oh, man. That, that was, was good food. That was great food. I remember, oh, the. Wayne Rader. Yes, yes. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember yeah, him, he was pocketing a lot of that money. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Was, that was interesting. Now, what do you think about this? And feel free to kick me in the balls here. You get a free meal every show, and the food was incredible. It was like chicken marsala. It was like high-end shit. Sure. We're all poor, so this was like a big deal. Yes. So I had just eaten, and I got the free meal ticket or whatever, and I said, I'm going to come back tomorrow and cash this in. So I came back tomorrow, and they're like, you don't get a free meal. The day's over. I'm like, but I did the set. So what, what, what do you think here? I think that um, you're broke at that time. I think they should have uh, given you the free mail, but 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 never allowed you to come back in again. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should have given you a meal and said, take it to go. Yeah, I mean, a free meal for a guy. You never forget the places that fuck you like that, that won't feed you. I know. It was a fight. I brought, sure. I brought a date there on New Year's. Oh, no, 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 what did CBs? Where was that? It was uh, on the corner of uh, McDougal and Bleecker. Yeah, and I bombed in front of her, but then we ate. We ate a good meal. Oh, oh there you go. Did you fuck your date? Yeah, we were dating. At oh, time. So yeah. it wasn't just the yeah. first. Ugh. Is there anything worse when you bring a girl to a fucking show? Been there. And you go up there and you fucking oh, you shit the bed. <laughs> I brought a girl. I was currently fucking. She was a cute blonde, and she loved the fact that I was a stand up. It turned her on, and yeah. I brought her to a show, and I ate. Shit, and she never fucked me again. Oh, wow. yeah. Did she say anything about it? She was just like, "Well, you gotta get out of here," you know. And uh, I was like, "Well, the crowd was tough. I tried some new stuff." She was like, "All right." She was already in a cab. Yeah, that's the worst because that, like, a lot of times, any girl that's ever fucked me, it's never a fucking physical. It's always like a personality thing uh -huh. or the thing about being a stand-up. But right. when they see you bomb, it's like the little bit of mojo you had is gone. Exactly. And I see you for what you are. Ugh. Yeah, man, we get shit for being like, oh, she's too heavy or whatever. But if they see me bomb, it's over. Yes. I'm a fat chick. The worst I'm doing, the more my side fat and tits are visible. <laughs> yes, <Like> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Fitzsimmons has that great thing where he's like, after a good set, you're a superhero for three hours. But once that three hours goes away, you start. If you don't hook up with the girl within that time, or get back to her place, or whatever it is, it starts fizzling. You're a superhero at that location. Yes, yes. yes. You, you take him to another location; those powers don't work. You're Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got, you got to rope her into your thing. Like she has to like you by the time that time is up. Right. Then when you go out, then she's like, "Oh, okay, I already like this guy." And you know, it's the first impression was a, a good first impression. Yeah. Well, what are you? Sixty eight. No. I, I'm 54. But 54. I'll, I will be 68, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Keep taking that prep. But he, by the way, by the way, the fact that I gave you a li this is why I should be drummed out of show business. <laughs> the fact that you're riffing and I go, no, I'm 54. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> you fucking weak chinned idiot. <laughs> but do you, are you getting the ladies like, oh, I like older men. This is hot. Cause yes, my age group is a no-go. No, uh, I think there's yeah, a lot please. of ladies who are into the... Uh... From my end, it's a no-go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> Not that I'm going to fuck anyone who can get pregnant anyway <laughs> at this point in my life. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I they tend to date uh, young. I have a girlfriend. I've had her for a girlfriend oh, okay. for a while. It's like it's it's weird not. And you're living together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a big step. It is. Yeah, and I like it. I mean, uh, it's like I, it, it, the, the other shit. Even when I'm single, if I'm not fucking a lot of girls, you jerk you off, you watch you porn. It's it's endless. It's an endless cycle of dopamine that it makes you feel bad when you're yeah. done. So I actually like it. Well, it's what? good to come and not be sad. Well, that's I didn't true. say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, I come and then all of a sudden she'll take the rope off her neck and get down from the stool. <laughs> I put it on your neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the visual. Then you come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, the sex is, but it becomes, I like being a little domestic because for, I would never have been. It's the first time I've ever lived with anybody. It's the first wow. time I've ever done this stuff. And, and like when I was 53, it started. So I was like, yeah, I like it. I, I like, I've done every other angle and uh, being this alone. This is the first time you've lived with someone. Never did it before. Wow. Never. That's impressive you made it that long. I know, but it's like now I'm, all these things, I'm like, my life is a hack 80s set. Like, you know what I mean? You hold the purse on the wall, like all the stuff I never did, I'm doing now. So I, I like it though. It makes me feel human. Like, yeah. You, like cook together, all that stuff. You yeah, mean? yeah. She'll cook like fresh fish and stuff. And I just like, I'm so happy she's there. Yeah. I'm like, I really love her. And I'm like, I'm happy she's at my place. Like this once in a while, you're like, fuck, I would love to. But then, like, eh, that stuff always made me feel bad. Yeah, exactly. And the head games of, like, she didn't respond, or maybe I'm being too annoying, or whatever, and you're just worrying about what she's thinking, and if she likes you yeah. still, all that shit drives it's me crazy. It's an addiction, the dating stuff, when oh, you're on yeah. those apps and stuff. You're just like, this is a fucking... It, and then you, you're you not satisfied. You want to, like, meet someone else. It, it, it's oh, it, it, it's never-ending. Completely. It's nev Carlin had a thing. He talked about, like, with, it, with people taking different, like, you know, uh, vehicles on trips. But he was he said, too many choices, America. It's not healthy. Yes. And he was so right. Like, I, I, it's not healthy for me when I can just swipe or look online. It's like there's no, in, there's nothing invested in any of these. It's just a moment, a moment, a moment, and yep. then you're just alone. I mean, how many times do you sift through Netflix for, like, two hours? You never even picked anything. You just kept sifting, and then you're done. You're like, I got to go to bed. That's yeah. a great point. TV, you had cable, and you were like, this is... Casinos it's, on. I'm watching it. We were watching something recently where, the, oh God, it was some. It was I was watching this movie, really good movie by the way. It, good rec if you haven't seen it. Blowout, the De Palma movie. Oh, with, is uh, that Volta? with uh, John Travolta, Travolta Nancy a Allen? Movie. Yeah, really good yeah. movie. I'd never seen it, but uh, anyway, there's a local newscaster, and he's like, "My show gets eight million viewers." And you're like a local news show that gets eight million <laughs> viewers. Like people didn't have options. Exactly. And that's kind of good. It was better because you know what? When it's shit on TV. You watch less TV. That's right. Yeah. And now when you can do anything like TikTok, Mark and I were talking about this when we were walking over here. We were just like, holy shit, the amount of shit on TikTok right now, the amount of options, the fact that it knows you, you just, it's, it is crack. Yeah. It is so hard. It's hard for us adults to get off it. Like, I can't imagine what it's like for kids. Oh my God. I know. My lady is younger than me and I'll go to the bathroom and I can tell she's like, Ooh, I can look at TikTok for three minutes or whatever, two minutes. And I'm it, like, geez, that's an addiction. It's hard not to, cause there's really interesting stuff too. It's like a lot of it is shit, but a lot of it is like, I'm watching pilots in turbulence. And I'm like, I've never been able to see that. I want to see what it looks like in sure. the cockpit. They're in Sh fucking turbulence. I want to watch a guy climbing a building with no harness. Yeah. They have all those like urban climbers. Like there's a lot of shit that's interesting to watch. Well, you're going wholesome. I thought your TikTok would be a lot crazy. I don't have TikTok. I took it off the phone. Oh, good TikTok for you. is wholesome though. That's is it? I mean, yeah, I got 13 year old camel toe twerking. Really? In yoga pants. That's we got different algos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I just didn't like TikTok. They said that like it spied. It, it got too much of your information. I'm just like, Ugh. And it's you don't not, need it. Yeah, it's not my thing anyway. I don't do great on oh, social Democrats media. Democrats and Republicans are like this is like the one issue they're coming That's together true. on to destroy TikTok. That's true. Only because it's Chinese and they think that the Chinese government is using it. Here's what will happen with TikTok. They'd be dumb if they were using it. They of course they would. Yeah, right. The American the, the Chinese Chinese government will like remove its interest or ability to check it and then it will stay. They're not going to take it off the app store. I don't think so. Really? But I don't care if they do. I, I mean, I'm not on it, so I don't care. Well, it's yeah. funny because they're acting like Facebook and all this shit isn't doing the same thing. They're all taking the data. I know, but it's our country taking the data. Right, it's American, right, and they yeah. probably can monitor it easier. They can. The, the regulations for American companies is probably different than in mm, communist China. It's probably harder sure. to get information. And then the irony is China only allows you to use TikTok for like two hours a day. So, Does it really? Yeah, they have a governor mm. on it, and we don't. And it's their app. And they're probably like, if you if they wanted to, you could, you know, make us look at anti American shit probably. Yeah. More yeah. than anything else. True. And it's young people on there. True. They probably have more algorithm control. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I oh, just no can't question. do it. I'll look at, once in a while on Instagram, but I'm like, yeah, I like the camel toe stuff too, or I'll see like workout video, but I'm like, ugh. This is just awful. On the yeah. road, it's bad, though. The last time, I, I'm trying not to jerk off, and the last time I was on the road, and da- I was a fucking, it was just, like, literally all three days. Yeah. Hours of jerking off. Doesn't that off. suck when you're like, I'll write, and then you're just like, nah, I'm just going to jerk off. Yeah, yeah, I don't write. I type with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Because um, my girlfriend wasn't with me. Yeah. Uh, but I got to a point recently where I'd wait for her to fall asleep and just sit in the other room and fucking. Uh, yeah, I do that, too. It's like when a married guy does. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, ah. Yeah. This is what my life is. I know. It's like your mom again. You know, you're like, oh, I can't let her find out. You're hiding socks. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I have to hope she walks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to ask you about uh, one of your specials where you have De Niro oh, in the intro. Oh, oh yes. yeah. That's insane. You had fucking Robert De Niro in the intro of, it was one of your Netflix. Yeah, shows, it was right? It was the one Netflix. Yeah, I did the other ones I did for Epix and HBO. But yeah, I got into this thing where I would get people I love to intro me. I had Ozzy do it one year. Wow. Um, you had Michael K. Williams from The Wire. Michael K. Williams, yeah. With that, that got one of the biggest pops ever because my face, uh, everybody knew I was obsessed with Omar from The Wire and we finally interviewed him. And uh, it started with my face and tape on my mouth and then the people saw him lean in mm. and then he, he, he uh, said something and he, he just licked my head and the place went fucking... Wow. So that was a highlight. But but De Niro, how do you how did you approach him for that? I texted him. I asked him. I I, I asked him. I, I asked Michael. I knew him. So I uh, we had be, he, we interviewed him finally on Opie and Anthony, and he recognized me from Lucky Louie. Oh wow! And then I would see him occasionally after that, and we traded numbers. And uh, I just texted him and said, "Would you do it?" And he goes, "Yeah, I would." And he didn't ask for the script. I also with De Niro, I didn't show him the full script either. I had, I had written to his people years before that because I wanted De Niro to introduce me, mm-hmm. and I never heard back. But then we, I worked on that movie, The Comedian, with him, and uh, Taylor Hackford, who was the director, because uh, I didn't ask for any extra money when I helped with certain jokes. I was fine with it. And he goes, well, Bob really likes you. You could just ask him. Wow. Um, because I'd had meetings with Taylor and De Niro just talking about stand-up or whatever. It was so bizarre. Yeah. I was so scared that I wasn't scared. It was like, wow. I'm just sitting, in, it was just me, De Niro, and fucking Taylor Hackford sitting and having coffee, talking well, I about- heard is, They're both awesome, I've heard. Yeah, I mean, Taylor was, was great to me. He can be very tough, um, but he, he loved me because I would just throw out joke ideas and we just clicked for some reason. Mm. So I think he helped pave the way with that. And I asked, um, and I sent a message to De Niro through his PayPal, and they wrote back, Bob would love to do this for wow. you. Wow. I couldn't, email. I couldn't fucking believe it. But the po- I wanted De Niro to spank me, uh, but I kept that out uh, of the thing. And I think that uh, I, and I, when I sat down with him in his office, because uh, his assistant said, hey, why don't we get everybody out and just let Jim and Bob talk about what this is going to be. And he's amazing because he's like, what do you want me to do? Like, you're directing him. You're, you're telling him what you want. Um, and I told him, and I go, there's going to be a thing where, I, where, you, where you spank me. I go, but I brought like uh, I brought like a brush for you. Uh, but he goes, ah, I don't care. I'm like, good. Remember you said that. Because I'm like, I'm going to drop my fucking pants yeah. and get over your lap. So we're doing the scene and he's slapping me. Um, and he tra- he goes, you want me to miss you? And I'm like, no, hit me. And so he hit me lightly. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, no, you should really. You're like Dunaway in Chinatown. I, yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, hit or like him in fucking Raging Bull. Come on, hit me harder. Right. But I'm told him to really hit me. And he did. He slapped the fuck out of me and it wow. hurt. And then when he spanked me, I, I pulled my pants down, got over his lap and he spanked me. Uh, but then I, he goes, let's do one where we're standing. Jesus. And, and that was the one we wound up using. He was right. He just knew how that would play on camera. And he fucking, he was, he, it was so, it, it, it murdered on the special. Wow. But that was, um, yeah, I was very lucky. I also, Gervais and Louis were in that opening too. Oh, Louis man. was the hardest one to get. Louis was the busiest. And uh, he was the last one I finally shot. Wow. But um, yeah, Ricky, uh, Ricky did it. And then Louis and then De Niro was like at the end. But yeah, that's, I'll never top that. Yeah, it's got to be hard to do a special after that because that, that's so big. It's hard to follow it. Yeah, I'll probably, I, I mean, I'm ready to shoot something now. I'll probably just YouTube it and, and, mm. and do very poorly and have to have everybody see how poorly the numbers nah, are doing. Nah, we'll all push the hell out of it. We'll push but but, I want, but I'll never top that. I'll never get. No, that's insane. And that was, was that the one, Netflix one where you did it? You did like a, that, that one crowd work moment in there? I think so, yeah. Somebody said something and I just kept it. I just liked it. I don't remember what it was. I, I remember you did that and I remember like, wow, not a lot of specials do this and I kind of liked it, you know? Yeah, I think they wanted me even to not do it, but I just liked that moment. I don't remember why. Um, 
I, I don't remember why that stayed in. I have no idea. But I, I never mind leaving that stuff. No, in. leave it in. I think because that's the stuff that catches now. That's stuff people talk about is that crowd work moment. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was a good special, but I I, I don't watch any of them back once they're finished. Yeah, you know yeah. how it is. You guys understand. You, you you watch it once while you're editing and yeah. you're done. And then I'm like, but that opening I would watch again. Like that, I feel really. That was awesome. Yeah. Stand up is hard for me to watch in general at this point. Like I, I back in the day, I would watch specials all the time. I feel like Mark still does at times. I try. I try to. I just, I like the beginning. To me, I'm like, let me see how they set this special sure, up right. and what they do different, what room it's in. But yeah, it's tough to watch a full hour. Like Big J's got one. It just hit a million. Yeah. And I think Big J's hilarious. So I watched most of that one. Kanane has a new one that's incredible. Might be his best work. Kyle Kanane. Check that out. So there's a lot of good comedy, but there might be too many specials. There's a special every 10 seconds. I know. I don't watch them because I'm just terrified of, like, I, I, I have to know where a joke came from. Like, people accused me. They, they said I took something from Norm. Mm. It was something very similar we had done in our specials, apparently. But I shot my special first. And I didn't see Norm do stand-up. So I knew in my exactly where this came from. Like, yeah. I knew where this bit came from because I remember when it started in my real life. Uh, but if I don't know where it comes from and it's something similar, I will drop it. Like, you know what I mean? But I always wow. have to know. So if I watched a lot of stand-up, I wouldn't know where it came from. But I have to be able to trace back where a joke came I from. I feel similarly. And even if you do come up with it on your own, there's such a thing as parallel thinking. Of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, that, that actually happened to me with a norm bit that I actually didn't know. Really? Yeah, what my mom said to me about Epstein, the worst part is is that he's a Jew. And I was like, <laughs> and I didn't know that was a norm. That norm well, the Cosby. Was Cosby. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that until I posted the thing. I was like, oh, I pulled it, you know? Wow. And I hate when people go, like, like this is like for people who are not stamps, go, you. it's like, you took that. It's like, no. I know. There are thieves, and we, but we kind of know who the thieves and, and concept stealers are. Right. Yeah. Like, most comics are going to step on each other's dicks going for a topical joke once in a while. It happens. Time. How All many time. angles are there? I mean, especially like, that's why a lot of us will, you know, steer clear of, you know, a Trump thing. You're like, oh my God, how many fucking angles exactly. were there? Yeah, like Unless I don't watch people. I, I like I, I do a whole thing about Trump and how his hair is perfect. I'm hoping nobody stepped on that. <laughs> but <orange>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you, I like think, it. <laughs> you think the late night guys would uh, get on board with this. I watch Colbert, then you watch Seth Meyer, then you watch Trevor Noah, then you watch whatever, and it's all the same Trump stuff. You're like, come on! You guys are all on at the same time. That's why, I, I mean, I happen to love Greg Gutfeld because he's been, he's been good to me for years. And I love the fact that he's beating all of them only because it's a different angle. It's like it's not the same right, angle they're all right, coming from. Right. If those guys would switch it up, they would do great again. I know, exactly. And now Fallon's doing politics. You're like, you're not that guy. What are you doing? Yeah. You're the ping pong guy or the lip sync guy. He do, he's doing politics? Now? Yeah, a lot of politics mm. up top. Don't let it come from the same angle. Like Carson would shit on every... You never really knew where he stood on because he was just making fun of all of them. That's it. Right. You don't have to... You don't need this... Uh, that, that's not a friend there. of comedy. You're fucking. Uh, I agree well, with in you. In the setup, yes. when, when people are clapping in the setup, you've got yourself a fucking problem. You're dead and, in the water. And that's like, that's a lot of what it is now. It's it's not even a joke. It's like a pander. Yeah, you know? it's agreeance comedy. Yeah, yeah, like I don't need people. I would much rather have them not agree with me, but think the punchline is so good they laugh. Like I like doing yeah. pro Trump stuff and pointing out why I think people who don't like him, what's wrong with you? Like I like doing that in New York because I know I. Th- feel them fucking holding back and I know where I'm going with it and I I, I know how satisfying it's going to be when they hear it and they just go fuck it that's funny and they laugh you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, that's I comedy I don't need them to agree with me a, right. a reluctant laugh is worth more oh, oh yeah. yeah it's way better way more impressive too but I did a Trump arraignment joke I'm like you know he might go to jail and the audience started applauding and I was like well this is over this yeah. is fucked yeah, because I don't, I don't need them to. But again, they've been kind of taught that that's a good thing. I like, know they're all signaling to each other. I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, we're yeah. all good. Yeah, we're heroes. There's, there's fear. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't. It's thank God I don't get it on the road. But I do feel it sometimes in the city where they're just definitely like, in the city. Yeah, but the other shit happens on the road. Like I, 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 I fucking hate. I don't care if people make fun of trans people, but I hate like the legislation, the anti-gay shit. It drives me fucking course, crazy. Yeah. So I was mocking it like in Texas. And I'm like in here that where the pro-abortion stuff is probably not going to do as well. Like you, you know where you are, the stuff that's going to make them go until they hear the punchline. You know what I mean? It's right. just the total opposite there than it is here. But you know, people who think that they're so free thinking, you yes. fucking Texans, you're as awful as New Yorkers are. I know, it's mirrored. And, and vice versa, you're the same fucking people. Same people. Right. Stop thinking you're such free thinkers, dummies, because you just get upset at different things. And it's very Take paint- that out, I gotta go to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's very paint by numbers too, like this group's gonna get mad about this, this, this topic, and this group's gonna get mad about this, this, this topic, and they think they're so different, but it's just the same 
side of a different coin. Yeah, there's certain parts of my new hour that I feel pushed back in different parts of the country. Yes. And I'm like, eh, maybe that's, that's good. good. Maybe that's good. That's... Yeah, you're not making everybody happy. Right. Yeah. I'll read a Bill Burr, like I'll look at a YouTube, and you read his comments like, this fucking libtard pussy, he's lost his age. And the next one's like, oh, this alt-right piece of shit. And you're like, all right, they don't even know where he's at. It is funny when you do a, a joke and people both politically come at you and either think you're on their side. Like, because the way Carlin talked about free speech, a lot of conservatives are like, this is the guy. Right. Yeah, watch the rest of the hour. And it's like, yeah. do you not know that he would have hated your stance on well, gays and abortions and everything else? Right. But that's the brilliance of Carlin is that literally people from every thought you know, and any political ideology are sharing his clips. Like, see, that's yeah, true. That's and true. you're like, I, I don't know. I mean, that, but that's when you're that good an entertainer and it's that well written. I mean, but Carlin would kill for everybody. He would, and he was also he was he was so good because he was talking about the people in the room. Like th those were a lot of his fans, but he wouldn't say you. He would just talk about people, and they would laugh. And half of them were bankers or whatever, right. or whatever he was talking about. But it was so. But they good. were able to laugh at themselves. Yeah, I know. You know. And that's like, and that's that's great that you could actually make someone laugh at themselves. That's and, and you're doing it without being like you fucking kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I but, went to one of his special tapings in really? uh, before I did stand up. It's like 1989. Wow. I was going to start comedy and I wound up going to uh, this something. The second one he shot at the state theater in New Jersey mm. and you could see me in the special in like the third row um, and some of the angles it's hard, but I'm Whoa. sitting there. I have like a little turtleneck and I think a chain ah. um, <laughs> and it was like 89. So after after the show, I wanted to meet him. So I walk up and I'm like, hey, I'm a comedian. I lied. Um, I'm like, can I meet George? Like, ah, he's not meeting anybody. I'm like, I'm a comedian. The guy's like, all right. Wow. So he brought me backstage and I got to go upstairs and meet Carlin. Um, and he, he was, I again, he signed my fucking uh, ticket stub. Yeah. And he was very nice. You know what I mean? He gave me, I forget what advice he gave me. Um, I think I asked him something about his wife being sober. But he was nice. He worked the whole room. He talked to everybody. Wow. But yeah, that was... Uh, I was very happy to meet him. That's I, amazing that that's like that's the password. It worked. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't work with, with everything, you know. No. no. You know, try that at the fucking garden to meet the, you know, <laughs> to meet Sabbath or, right, right. or or one of the Knicks. <laughs> yeah. I'm a basketball player. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I met Carlin too, and he gave me a little razzing, and it was it meant the world to me. What What did he say about you? I went to. I took off work. I skipped work, and he was at Borders Books on Wall Street signing shit. And I waited in line like a like an idiot with all the other people. And I was watching everyone go up to him. He's sitting there at a table. And then they're going like, I loved you in Jersey Girl. I love you in Bill and Ted. I love wow. you in this. And I was like, ah. Oh. So I was like, I'm going to be the stand-up guy. Yeah. So I go up and I had brain droppings and all these books. I looked like a real dweeb. And I go up there and I go, hey, George, uh, big fan. I love back in town. I love jamming in New York. And I'm dropping all these special names on him. And he's like, you're a comedian? And I go, yeah. He goes, you sound like a comedian. I go, oh, thanks. He goes, you got a real talent for jacking around. <laughs> Which I'm still not sure what that means, but I'll take it. And then we got a photo. Yeah, oh, you did take one? Oh, yeah, it's on my wall framed. Yeah. Yeah, I got one with him two years later. And I will always love Colin for this. When he did Tough Crowd, I got, oh, yeah. to, I got to do it with him. And I got to be in the sketch. I wasn't supposed to be in the sketch. It was Carlin and Colin as priests. And then Colin goes at the end, we want you to dress like an altar boy and break the fourth wall and ask Carlin to sign a record. Oh. So I interrupted the sketch and asked him to sign. And he called me like a cocksucking motherfucker. Like it was, wow. I, I, and and, and the, the thing he was, he goes, I said, I love your seven dirty words. He goes, yeah, that you can't say on television. He goes, here's seven more dirty words you'll never hear on television. Welcome to the Jim Norton show, everybody. <laughs> wow. Seven more things you'll never hear. Yeah, so it was, wow. uh, that was wow. the highlight of my tough crowd uh, time. And Jerry was on once too, I believe. Yeah, I just found photos. I did. I did a, a thing. With, it was Seinfeld. I was on once with him, but this was in I think two thousand two when they were. It was eight episodes or whatever before they knew if it was going to go. The first one mm. was Janine, and I think I forget who else was on. But that one had Jerry and somebody else. It might have been Sarah. I don't remember. Yeah. But I did that with that with with Seinfeld, Voss, and somebody else, and I was very nervous. It's crazy watching those because there's like a young Kevin Hart and he's getting trashed and sure. now he's the biggest. And then there was a young. Uh, but he still would get trashed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he would still take That's it. That's the yeah. beauty of it. And then a young Chappelle, and you can see they don't have like this glow of like super fan, uh, super stardom yet. 
But it's so fun to hunger. see him. I mean, they were young comics. Yeah. They were hungry. Dave was already famous, though. I remember we saw him. We were going to Comedy Central to do some meeting, and he was getting on the elevator talking about this new show he was working. Like, he was just starting up with Chappelle's show, but he was known by that. Like, Dave was already yeah, a well-known. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, right, I think right. the Nutty Professor. Softly right, already. right. Oh, true. man, he's so fucking good, Nutty Professor. Oh, I mean, that, wouldn't that be scene shopping. Is, that scene is hilarious. Amazing. Like, Eddie Murphy. Uh, that's an underrated. I mean, just that performance is fucking insane by Eddie Murphy. It's like. It's insane. Oh, yeah. That was the uh, Hercules. Hercules, yeah. All the fat suits. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he played the mom, the son, the brother. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. So uh, Eddie Murphy and Eddie Murphy, like when they would promote yeah. him. Yeah, like, oh, featuring... dude. That was so, yeah. Young Chappelle. He he had done a decent, he did that movie with Norm, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's He'd right. Been in some what stuff. was the movie? Screwed, I think it's called. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you got it. Screwed. Yeah. Um, Norm yeah. started, ta- I never knew Norm that well, but he started, we started talking after Shane got in trouble, and he was really fucking upset about Shane. He would call Shane. Yeah, he started DMing me. He wow. wanted Shane to come on our show, but Shane was like waiting to do his own thing, which was smart because he blew up his podcast. Perfect, perfect playbook. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Norm was really bothered by how much DeVito. shit he was getting, and that SNL had been destroyed. Yeah. for him. But it worked out better for Shane. He's more famous now than he would have been. Sure, and I think l- Shane would have would have blown up on SNL yeah, too. So, oh, I I'm think, sure, I think but he's I mean, inevitable. He had this thing now where people like this guy absolutely got fucked. And now we're going to see what he had. And he's great. Even the Times had to admit how funny. You know how fucking hard that must have been for them to write that article? <laughs> That's a good After point. they completely agree probably with him getting fired. Yeah. To have to admit this guy shouldn't have been fired. I've seen comics walk up to him. I'm not going to name names. But they're like, I shit on you. Sorry. And I'm like, yes. Good for, good for them for admitting it. Yeah. I did mean, they apologize? Yeah. I mean, because I, I definitely remember when I was getting trashed and like, you know, for a joke. And I, I remember people trashing me. They never really? fucking apologize. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, I want a list. <laughs> and yeah, but you remember who it was. Yeah. And you'll never forget. No, of course not. Like 9-11. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you never forget the guys no. who fucking uh, treated you like shit. Well, I've had good success. The first guys to be nice to me in the city were Mark Marin, Louis, and Colin. Like wow. they're, they're All those guys. And they were established by that point. But in New York, they were the guys who weren't insecure about me taking their spot. Yes. Like, you know, a lot of comics in my, you know, anytime you meet guys in your, yeah. your area, they're worried or they're just like, you're the new guy. Right. But those guys didn't give a fuck. They knew I wasn't going to do anything to hurt what they were doing. I've seen that trend. The funny guys are never the meanest. It's always the, you know, shaky comics. The marginal guys will try to sabotage you because right. they, deep down, even if they're arrogant and narcissistic, they know that they're kind of frauds. Those guys knew that they weren't. Like, you know, Collins, no one's taking Colin or Louis or fucking Mark Marin's spot. But Marin, I feel like, was underrated back then, was he? Yeah. Was he not? I feel like I mean, Lou, I feel like Louis probably got more shine. Uh, Colin obviously had the, had the TV show, but Marin, I feel like, I remember he told me once he's like, I did like thirty seven Conan, yeah. and I couldn't sell a fucking ticket on the road. That's right. Yeah, I remember being kicked off the radio, being and being in Florida, listening to Mark on. Um, it was, uh, I think it was called Morning's Edition, like Morning Sedition, mm. when he had like the Air America show, and I was yeah. so jealous. But back then, people didn't. The podcast blew him up, obviously. Right, right. Um, and he's a good actor, so he does like he is. But he's a great interviewer. Like he's a good talker. Yeah, he's comfortable. He can keep it going for two hours. Like so, that podcast. It was, he used to do that in our studio. He, he when when that started, he would come into uh, Sirius oh, wow. and like use an Opie and Anthony studio, like or, or production studio, to do his podcast in. I didn't know that. No, but I'm not saying it was our doing it was just sure. one of the places he would he would tape but yeah back then people didn't really comedians respected him though comics always respected mark he yeah. was like among us he was like he had a show called never mind the buzzcocks which i did with coolio and uh the woman who sang in berlin Jeez. take my breath away it was wow. a very bizarre fucking uh very bizarre panel a lot of range well and you uh i heard your interview with him and he he had a lot of respect for you it was a good hey. interview. oh i don't remember it i mean it was on it, it was uh on his, uh, he's always been very cool to me. Like I yeah. love Mark. I know a lot of guys didn't. They, they thought he was aloof or whatever. Mm. But um, it's because he was kind of. You always knew where you stood with him. Like he yeah. was kind of again emotionally honest. Right. He blunt. Right. He was a blunt guy. But it's weird. There's always gonna be heads bumping. Like I remember listening to some radio show where Geraldo and Patrice. Patrice was like I hated you for a while, and now we're cool. But I, if I saw you, I wanted to fight you, and all. And Geraldo's like, really? I didn't even know that. He's like, oh yeah, I hated you. And you're like, man, no matter what time or what level you're at, there's always some beef. Yeah, there's always a guy that reads something wrong or it's yeah. jealousy or whatever the fuck that, that you just like, I don't, there's people I just don't like. Sure. And sometimes I don't know why I don't like them. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love Rosebud because like there was somebody she didn't like and there's a bunch of us just sitting there and when the person likes, she's like, I don't fucking like him. And I'm like, the fact that she said it to all, like like she didn't care if any of us. Right. I, I really like that. She's very blunt. Yeah, yeah we had her on. She's great. Yeah, she is. She's to the point. There's something, yeah, there, there's something about having beef though when you get to a certain age where you're like, this is fucking I know, what are we doing I don't. Here? Yeah, I, I, I had a weird thing with a guy and I just texted him. I was like, what are we doing? And it was kind of like, we kind of squashed. That's is it good. a comedian? Yeah, but I was like, "What are we doing?" And it was, it's fine now. But it, it, you get to an age where you're like, "I don't want to fucking dread running into an adult." I know. This is so stupid. So yeah, stupid. We're doing like this is such a fun fucking gig. Like, there's enough problems without worrying about bumping into another. Co- it's just annoying. I don't. I don't want to worry that. about shit that isn't new jokes. Yes. You know, I, I don't want to worry about shit that isn't you know the job. I, and then you think about you're like, oh, this is going to take up a part of, you know. Any part of my mind for tonight, I don't want to deal with it. I completely agree. Yeah, do you avoid eye contact? Do you not say hello? What do you, right. What do you, like, I found out there was a guy, within the last two years, a year, somebody told me, like, yeah, he was shitting on your set while you were on. And I really want to call him out on it. Um, it's like, 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 I, what are you fucking, you think you're a brilliant joke writer, you idiot? Uh, but I, I'm like, ah. It was told to me kind of in confidence, and I'm like, and what are you going to gain by confronting him? Yeah. You might apologize. It's all it arrogant. Like, was it, I mean, how bad was it? Not was it terrible, bad? but like misreading the point I was making. Like, I hate when... Uh, and like... And it was a seller set. It was, yeah. It's like a, also a workout set. And you've earned you've earned enough respect to be like, let him fucking... Let me find let it. Let him find Somebody it. who didn't like the angle I was taking because I don't double down on either side. He, I think he was one of those people that thinks... That if you loathe each side, that you're afraid to take a stand, mm. uh, which you know, it's just I would love to have had that chat with him. Uh, yeah. yeah, about what a fucking. But who cares? I'm afraid to take a stand. I'm trying to be funny. What, what was the stand shit? What, I, am I a politician? It, it, exactly. And it wasn't even that. It, it, it really wasn't that. It was just it was annoying his misinterpretation of it and the fact that he said it to another comic. Uh-huh. And the other comic told me, which I loved. Yeah. Um, but I've also never. You're never a comic who have been like this dude's scared to say something. <laughs> That's true. No, but I, it was more like or. Maybe he thought it was, hey, um, yeah, I hate when guys did, like like I, I don't know. I oh, I right. think that he thought that I was like playing both sides of it, but because I, I I was worried about, and it's like no, I just don't think your fucking hive mentality is brave, dummy. Like I, I, I we define it differently. Yes, but I would love to have had that argument with him. Um, yeah, but it just he didn't say it to me, so I can't betray somebody else's. You know what I mean? I hear you. I'll I tell you. you. I bet I know who it is. Yeah, I'll tell I might you after. Too. after the show. Yeah. Um, anything you want to plug? Just um, when does this air? Probably this weekend now, right? I guess Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't you hate when you're taping with somebody and they're like, "Look, I got. Is this gonna be out by seven tonight?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a bunch of uh, gigs coming up. I'm in Cleveland, the 21st, 22nd. I have. Uh, what do I have? Uh, hilarities. I got. Oh, best club. Great. Isn't it great? great? That's like my favorite. Nick is the fucking coolest. Yeah. I've only done it once. Love... Oh, it's like... oh, it's great. That's like top five for me. I love it. Bethlehem, PA, the uh, 19th of uh, May. Wellmont Theater in Jersey, the 20th. And I'm on Burt's tour, 17th, 18th. And I'm doing of June. I'm in Rogan's Club in July. Oh, nice. But I don't think that's on sale yet. And I'm sure if Joe tweets it, it'll, it will hopefully it'll sell. sell. It, yeah. I hope so. No but yeah, that's it. it. I'm, I'm finally going back out on the road. I was just like uninspired for a long time. Thank you guys for having me. I love both of you guys. Hey. Uh, you guys are so inspirational what you're doing. Seriously, the Thank way you guys man. have blown up just you using your material. Like yeah. it, it, you're not you're not working like you're putting great jokes out and you're forcing people to go, this guy is funny and coming. See, I love what you guys are both doing. Uh, Honestly, I really well, we write it. a lot because of guys like you, Louis, Colin, you know, Attell, like the the guard in New York that's like, you know, the New York legend. So that's yeah. why we write jokes you know thank you I, I will i will say thank you very much for that as much as people will object to you putting me in that category with those guys <laughs> <laughs> that'll be your number one comment like really yeah <laughs> colin yeah but this guy i uh, i've exhausted all my cities so i'm going to weird towns i'm going to Mon- bozeman montana i'm going to great falls montana dayton then uh then it's off to australia going down under so come to sydney melbourne brisbane auckland New Zealand, holy shit. Damn. It's going to be nuts. That's uh, exciting. Say hello. 
MarkNormanComedy.com. San Diego, Sacramento, uh, Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis. Tickets low as fuck. Kalamazoo in a 1,500-seater for some reason. Ooh, Help me the fuck out. It's a tough town. Uh, Perrysburg, all of Bethlehem, Wilmington, Delaware also could use a bump there. So uh, Baltimore, Philly, Hampton Beach, Portland, Maine, Connecticut, Richmond, all of Yeah, you see it. SamRL.com slash shows. Uh, Denver, Nashville, San Antonio, Houston. See you on the road. Wait, what is that? Go back down a little bit. There's a misprint. I've never seen that. No, go down. What is it? Late show added. <laughs> <laughs> never seen that on my website. <laughs> There you go, folks. You heard it here first. Fo- follow Jim Seam on the road. One of the best. Thank you. Uh, yes. And drink Bodega Cat Whiskey, guys. BodegaCatWhiskey.com. We hear it's very close to being legal in New York. Yes. Nice. Fingers fingers crossed. Hallelujah. Finally. So, yeah, get a bottle. Go gay. Check out Jim. And we'll see you in hell. Yep. Sunday's the day for my next fender. A bit of Pivarek. You know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. Talking shit about the fucking punk And I get down in the same way Up on the roof like a cop's coming And naked Samuel is feeling dangerous I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans This woman doesn't look like I remember her 